just going to ready. Good evening, everyone. It is April 7th, 2022. This is the May meeting of the Council Rock School Board of Directors School Board meeting. I'm going to ask you all, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. From here, I'd like you to introduce you, ladies and gentlemen, to the Wrightstown Elementary School Choir. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> ah. <laughs> they graduated. They are now at North. And North, uh, I'm sorry, this is the North Voice, ladies and gentlemen. So proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the paradise burn. O'er the ramparts we watched, where so gallantly streaming, and the
Yeah, they were from Council Rock North, not Wrightstown. My uh, agenda was not updated. I apologize. They're a little big to be in Wrightstown. Madam Secretary, roll call, please. Edward Tate. Present. Michael Thorward. Present. Miriam McKee. Here. Joseph Hidalgo. Present. Ed Solomon. Here. Mike Roosevelt. Here. Bob Hickey. Here. Yoda Pally. Here. And Kristen Marcel. Here. Okay, from there we're going to go to the Council Rock North Student Advisory Board. Good evening, Mr. T. Welcome back from the magical Orlando, Florida area with Thank your you team. Thank you very much. It's glad to be back. I said it was a uh, positive experience for all the students that went. So again, it's time to catch up on some sleep, though. Uh, now they had a great time. And as always, thank you for having us back tonight. And again, a huge thank you to Mr. Carlin, our North Boys, for really starting off this meeting. Uh, it's really nice to have that opportunity for the showcase so many of our amazing musicians this morning, this evening, and now we're going to hear from some of our students um, about many other things happening at Council Rock High School North. Uh, we are a little short today. We have a couple that are feeling under the weather, and we do have one that had a scheduling conflict, um, but we are going to get reports for them, and we have Anjali uh, stepping in today as well. So I'm going to pass it on to Anjali Shukla, who is our current senior class president. Hello, everyone. My name is Anjali, as Mr. T said, and I'm Council Rock North Senior Class President. Um, I'm filling in for our Student Advisory Board Representative, Katie Daniels, the senior class, which is her a speedy recovery. So our Disney trip was from April 19th to April 23rd. It was super successful, and all of our kids had a fantastic time. So thank you to all the administrators, chaperones, and everyone else who helped the seniors have a great trip. Secondly, prom planning is going very well with our theme being Enchanted Forest, as voted on by the senior class. The North Senior Prom will be on Saturday, May 21st at the Crystal Tea Room in Philadelphia from 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. Ticket sales were four days in April, and we ended up at around, around 400 tickets sold. Um, so we're really looking forward to seeing everyone there. The senior class is also hosting a fundraiser at Mod Pizza in Newtown on Monday, May 16th, and that'll last all day throughout Mod's hours. So please try your best to support. And lastly, the seniors all joined together in wearing their college merchandise or merchandise celebrating their next steps. And I wish the best of luck to the entire class in their endeavors. Thank you for your time. Hi there, and thank you for once again having me. My name is Alex Demetz, senior at Council Rock North and a level 300 commercial arts student at Middle Bucks Institute of Technology. I will once again be reporting on what is happening at Middle Bucks, North Choirs, and Sock and Buskin for you. Starting off with Middle Bucks, Students from various technical schools throughout Pennsylvania, including Middle Bucks, competed in the 2022 Skills USA state competitions. The competitions were held in Hershey, Pennsylvania in April. MBIT had 24 competitors participating who earned a total of 15 medals, three gold, six silver, and six bronze. The three MBIT gold medal winners will compete at the National Skills USA Leadership and Skills Conference in Atlanta, Georgia in June 2022. Multimedia students Cullen Hussey and Art uh, from oh, excuse me uh, Cullen Hussey from Archbishop Wood and Derry Demchuk from Central Bucks South recognized for directing and cinematography for their work on the film Uncomfortable Silence in the 2022 Greenfield Youth Film Festival. Congratulations to them. 
An additional congratulations to our dental occupational students who passed the dental existing national board's radiation health and safety exam. They can now officially take a, any x-rays for their dental patients. Skills USA, our student government organization, held an ice cream social fundraiser for Ukraine to be donated to the Heart to Heart International Organization. The students raised over $900. Our annual senior recognition ceremony will be head on, held on Tuesday, June 7th at 6.30 p.m. in William Tennant High School Auditorium. Please mark your calendars and plan to attend this event to acknowledge and congratulate the class of 2022. This year, we have the largest enrollment for our summer career exploration program for students entering 7th, 8th, 9th, or 10th grade during the week of July 11th. Students are invited to register for 12 courses offered during the week-long program. Additional information can uh, be found at www.mbit.org. As always, I would like to remind you all that you can find Middlebucks on all sorts of social media to keep up uh, with updates. Now for some news on North Choirs. Uh, first of all, thank you again for having us, our select ensemble North Voice at today's meeting. We always appreciate uh, a excuse to show off a little bit. Uh, secondly, we are gearing up for our final concert of the year, only two weeks away. This concert is made extra special by the fact that it will be a showcase of unique arrangements of Beatles music. This includes, but it's not limiting to, a acapella Here Comes the Sun, When I'm 64, performed as a barbershop quartet, and Can't Buy Me Love in the form of a traditional Renaissance magical. I encourage you all to attend as rehearsals have been going great. Looking beyond that, we are also preparing for our end of year banquet, which is sure to be lots of fun. Thank you for your continued support of Council Rock's choir programs. Last but not least, Sock and Buskin. It is a very exciting week for Sock and Buskin, as Mr. Carlin showed. It is opening week for our first musical since 2019, Little Shop of Horrors. In fact, our first performance is tomorrow. You can buy your tickets at, for this funny, strange, and interesting musical at SiranTickets.com or at the door tomorrow at 7, Saturday at 7, or Sunday at 2. We are overjoyed to share this show with you. Thank you for having me as a representative for the last three years and the opportunity to keep you informed about all the excitement at Middlebucks, North Choirs, and Sock and Buskin. And now for the 11th grade report. Good evening. Our spring sports season is in full swing. Boys lacrosse is currently tied in second place for the national division with an over, overall record of 8-2. to two. They're excited as they recently beat Pensbury for the first time in four years, and senior Dean Scalamandre is on pace to repeat the national division MVP. Girls lacrosse has chalked up seven wins this season, which is a continuing the positive trend over the past several seasons. Baseball is tied for first place in the Patriot Division. Senior Colling Williams has thrown two no-hitters this season, and Austin Stalker leads the team's RIBI and home runs. Nick uh, Forcello is a 3-0 as a relief pitcher uh, with 22 strikes out and only two walks. Softball continues to make improvements each day. They played North Penn, the defending state champions, and accomplished things that very few teams have done before. They have been putting the ball in play and making solid defensive plays. Girls track is off to a great start. 3-0 to zero, started the season in dual meets with many young ladies qualifying for our district meet at the end of the season. In addition, a number of runners were able to participate in the Penn's relay last week. Tennis is currently 5-6 to six with a young team compromised of four freshman starters. They also had a huge win over Pensbury to move into second place in the league. SOL doubles is quickly approaching, and North has a good chance of moving on to districts. Volleyball is sitting at 12-2 to two and are tied for second place for a national conference and third in District 1 standings. The boys are making a push for the top seed and going to playoffs and hope to re remain focused and achieve their goal of making the state tournament. As for the junior class, they just held their prom last weekend at Princeton Hyatt. The students had an amazing, uh, an amazing night of dancing, taking pictures, and spending time as a class. Class selections are quickly approaching, and planning for a senior year will begin shortly. Sorry, I was unable to attend this evening, but look forward to seeing you next year. So um, our 10th grade representative, Timmy Gracie, was unable to make it today, so I'm going to read his speech. As the school year is coming to an end, advanced placement testing has been going on throughout this past week and will stretch into next week as well. The AP tests are available for sophomores, juniors, and senior students. The students have worked extremely hard this year and will anxiously await to hear their scores this July. In about two weeks, Keystone examinations will be taking place. Students enrolled in Algebra 1, Biology, and 10th grade 
English, we'll take these at the end of the year. As for the 10th grade class, there is little to say other than that we are very close to the end of the school year and there is only about 26 remaining days of school. Final examinations will be occurring, as they always do, stretching over the course of the last few days of the school year. It, is a, it was a great year to be a part of SAB, and I will look forward to meeting you again in the fall. Good evening, everyone. My name is Leland Nagel, and I am the Student Advisory Board representative for the ninth grade class. Today, I will be updating you on the clubs at Council Rock North. To start, our Student Executive Board has had its last major event of the year, Mr. CRN. Each of the boys in the pageant chose a fundraiser to give the money each of them raised to. It was a great success and a fun night for all students who came and watched. Another one of our clubs, GSA, participated in the National Day of Silence, which is a student-led movement to protest against bullying and harassment of LGBTQ students. Our FBLA club had their state leadership conference in Hershey, our orchestra had their tour to Germany, and North Choirs had their a cappella at The Rock. As Alex said, Sock and Buskin is having their last show of the year, Little Shop of Horrors, this weekend at North, so go buy your tickets. Lastly, our speech and debate club had their wonderful showing at the Tournament of Champions. They had a semifinalist, a third place, and a sixth place. Not only did they do outstanding at the Tournament of Champions, they were also sending 30 kids to nationals and at least eight middle schoolers to middle school nationals. As this year comes to an end, the clubs here at North plan to make next year better than their last. Thank you to teachers for a National Teacher Appreciation Day. Thank you for having me. I personally want to thank, we have, uh, like we heard, Alex and Katie are two of our seniors. Um, that will be last one for SAB and also congratulate Anjali. Also being a senior, so this will be one of the last times we'll be up here presenting in front of all of you. So again, congratulations to the three of you. We're very proud of all your hard work. Thank you. Folks, from there, from here, we're going to go to the acting superintendent report with Dr. Elliott. Please bear with her. The voice you're about to hear is real. Um, <laughs> really bad. Um, good luck. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that wonderful introduction, <laughs> Mr. Solomon. No, I'm good. I'm going to make it through. <laughs> Good evening, uh, members of the school board and Council Rock community. Um, this, this evening I have some information to share with you, but first um, I wanna say that our first week of May began with a horrible tragedy involving two of our Council Rock students. Such a tragic event is always difficult to process. Every person processes a tragic event in different ways, and our students and their parents process this event in different ways. Some parents wish to process together as a family and others may seek additional support to help cope with their reactions to this tragedy. The Council Rock response team has and will continue to support students, staff and families as they deal with the many emotions people may feel today and in the coming days and weeks. As I wrote in my message to the community, when these types of tragic events occur in our community, it is important that we pull together and support each other. So please stand and join me in a moment of silence to send your thoughts and prayers to the two students, their family, our students, and our community as we cope with our emotions and reactions to this tragic event. Thank you. Tonight, I can officially announce that the last day of school for students in grades K through 11 is Tuesday, June 14th. This will be a half day for all students. Only PM kindergarten will attend on June 14th. The last day for teachers is Wednesday, June 15th. And of course, graduation for the class of 2022 is Thursday, June 9th. As you heard from our student advisory board, this week was Teacher Appreciation Week in Council Rock. We are blessed to have such amazing teachers who dedicate their time, compassion, and energy to every one of our students. 
Great inventors and leaders in our world are not born. They are motivated and inspired to be great and do great things by amazing teachers like the teachers we have in Council Rock. From the bottom of my heart, I thank you for everything that you do every day for each one of our 10,500 students. Thank you also to the parents and administrators who have spent time this week showing their, graduate, showing their gratitude, gratitude to our teachers. The decorated doors, yard signs and lunches and more are very much appreciated, so thank you. Tonight, we have an opportunity to honor some incredible student athletes who competed in Special Olympics. Please allow me to introduce Ms. Wendy Lausch. She will introduce us to the athletes here this evening. Ms. Lausch. I'd like to welcome everyone. My name is Wendy Lauch. I'm the life skills teacher up at Council Rock High School South. Um, so one of many coaches that have worked with our students to get them ready for this event um, that they enjoy. Um, the event was held this past Saturday at Council Rock North Walter Stadium. The Special Olympics was started almost 50 years ago um, as a day camp for children with intellectual disabilities. The organization now provides year-round training and competitions in a variety of sports to over 5 million athletes worldwide. Although this year was a modified version of the past events, the Count Rock School District still had multiple students, staff, volunteers, coaches from classroom teachers, PE teachers, physical therapists, and support staff. And I would like to send a thank you to all of them for the work that they did to get our athletes ready to be successful. We had stands full of families and community members that provided the backdrop for cheering and encouragement and motivation for our the athletes, and that is a huge part of what makes them so excited, so thank you for that. A creed is a set of beliefs or aims which guide someone's actions. Special Olympics has a creed that is said by all athletes at the start of the event. Let me win, but if I cannot win, let me be brave in the attempt. This motto is used to encourage athletes to participate despite whatever challenges they may face. Count Rock School District had eight schools participate, as well as some of our past graduates returned to compete as part of our team. And across all levels, we had 47 athletes who despite challenges came out ready to bring home gold, silver, and bronze medals in running, javelin, softball toss, tennis ball toss, standing, and running long jumps. Their hard work, dedication, and infectious smiles is what makes the event great. And after having a two-year break in the, in the competition, the smiles and excitement were even more amazing to see again. So will our athletes please stand? We have a... lucky enough to have some representatives from our team here tonight. Um, so I do have some certificates for them if it's okay if I call their names up for their certificate. Michael Joseph. Yes. <laughs> Lori Ann Boxt. Frank 
Nikki Mellon. And Wyatt D'Annunzio. All right, our Special Olympians. Parents' photos, go ahead. Thank you. Congratulations to all our Special Olympians. Thank you so much. Finally this evening, members of the Council Rock Education Foundation have joined us to announce the recipients of the Innovative Classroom Grants for the 2022-2023 school year. Ms. Jennifer Fastiel and our new Executive Director, Ms. Bethann DeBosch, have joined us this evening. Good evening. Thank you all for having me again. For those of you who I've not had the pleasure to meet yet, I'm Beth Ann Dobosch, the new executive director for CREF. Uh, I'm very pleased uh, that I get to return to you tonight to announce some very special um, grants to award winners here um, within the school district. I just want to take a moment to thank the school board for allowing us to have this great um, program here tonight, as well as the CREF board member. So if you're a CREF board member, if you could just give me a wave Thank you so much for your support throughout all of this. Um, special thanks to our grants committee, which has um, made this process really amazing and smooth um, under the leadership of Jennifer Feinsteel. Um, thank you so much. Uh, thank you to all the educators who submitted proposals. They were all so wonderful. It was a really hard job reading through all those proposals. Wonderful ideas. You have wonderful, wonderful educators um, in this district. So thank you all that applied, um, especially those that are now winning. CREF <laughs> um, is really pleased that we're approaching our half million dollars in support of the Council Rock School District in innovative programs and nearing about 50 uh, specific programs and projects that we have funded and have many who have gone to greater things. So I'm um, really pleased tonight. We're going to ask everyone to come up. Um, Jennifer and our co-president, Marianne Malicious, is here to help present the awards. So, oh, one last thing. Thank you to the community. Thank you to our donors that have supported CREF um, year after year and those who have yet to support, but I know you will after today. Um, thank you in advance. Um, we raise our dollars through a variety of ways, but um, one in particular is coming up on June 20th, our annual golf classic. Um, so I invite you all to attend. I do have some cards that I'm going to leave out. So if you want to grab them, um, that would be wonderful. Um, but now I turn it over to um, our chairwoman of the Grants Committee, Jennifer Feinsteel. Good evening. Um, members of the board and the Council Rock community that are here and watching us on TV. It's very exciting to be here. Um, we're celebrating the Innovative Grant winners for 2020, 2022. Um, and tonight that includes 10 grants that we awarded and funded with about $30,000 in funding. So that is awesome. Um, the teachers with us tonight are exemplary examples of the educators of the Council Rock School System. We're so lucky and blessed to be part of this community 
and um, having children in the school system, it, it is incredible. I thank you all to the teachers. Teacher Appreciation Week couldn't be a better time. Um, this year's integrative grant, winner, grant winners truly inspired us. The grant recipients have written project plans that add support, materials, and or technology in areas of literacy, social and emotional health, math, business, science, STEAM, art, music, and social studies. So we have covered a lot of bases in these 10 grants. Um, so I want to introduce each grant project winner, and um, Mary Malicious is here, and she's gonna hand out a certificate to them, and we just wanna thank them again for their hard work. And I'm gonna give a short description of the grants too, just to give you an idea of what the titles mean. So first is the Hawk's Nest Online Store. It's benefiting Council Rock South, and it was written by David Applebaum. This is an innovative and student-run grant that will update the Council Rock South online store. Students will learn and work with 21st century business models. And he was awarded $1,000 to bring that program up to date. Next is the, oh, who's the <laughs> Next is the Computer Numerical Control Design Initiative. That's a mouthful. And it is um, for Council Rock North, and Colleen Palmer is the author of that grant. And this is for the art department at North. It's to purchase a table toe CNC machine to elevate the AP3 design program and support special education students in foundation courses. A CNC machine makes precise cuts, piercings, and engravings that are incorporated into final artworks. Next, we have the ukulele buddy, and it is benefiting Wrightstown Elementary and Holland Elementary, and Samantha Staffieri wrote this grant. It is um, intended to help people with any ability level to instantly play ukuleles by simply pressing a colored button. So it's allowing students of all, all um, students struggling with fine motor skills, sorry, to, um, to still participate with their peers and um, enjoy that aspect of music class as well. Next is the interactive display using Hummingbird. Um, that is at Holland Elementary, and it is Melissa Hackett. And um, when I first saw this one, I thought, what does a hummingbird <laughs> have to do? But a hummingbird is actually a, it is a, a type of technology. And it is um, a micro-bit powered robotic kit that allows students to bring any vision, of life, any vision to life. So students will be introduced to interactive displays by learning how to code using the Hummingbird and programs like Microsoft, Make Code, and Scratch. So it's really a really cool program. Can't wait to see it in action. And that was Melissa Hackett. I cannot remember if I said her name, but thank you, Melissa. <laughs> the next one is Off to Class for English Learners. Um, this, this is for the um, Council Rock South, Council Rock North, Holland Middle School, and Newtown Middle School. And it is a um, software toolkit for the ELD program delivery. Um, the curriculum is, is based on recent language acquisition and developmental research. Um, it is for grades seven to 12, and that is Shannon Hubeck, Kathleen Bound, and Aaron Clerk. And next we have the Soul Fine Stone STEAM Innovation, and it is Kate Lockett, Laura Penateri, Lauren Kozub, and Megan Sabal. Um, that is for Solfine Stone, obviously, and it is awarding a classroom set of 15 Sphero robots that support collaborative work in classrooms of up to 30 students. Um, the main objective of the grant is to integrate programming and technology into an instructional content area. Um, our next grant is the Outdoor Classroom at Newtown Elementary School. It is um, sponsored by Mindy Popescu and Annie Coulihan. Um, and this grant is for an outdoor classroom that will be housed at Newtown. It will include an outdoor whiteboard, weather measuring equipment, and preparation for installation of donated stump seating. Um, the outdoor classroom will be utilized for lots of STEAM activities, specifically on the weather units that the students study. So we're very excited about that one. Next, we have Reading Around the World, and this is at both Newtown Middle School and Holland Middle School. It was written by Annie McKernan and Jaina Bovino. And the project is designed to give students working in the English Language Development Program access to a wider variety of free choice reading materials. So we'll be purchasing additional book titles that will allow students to read in their native language to, um, to further um, help them to be able to enjoy reading. And 
and a similar one, using children's literature to support social emotional learning. This is at Hillcrest. It is for the um, whole school. It is um, Alexis Sandberg and Annie Lenicki. And this is a Mind Up curriculum supports social emotional learning to support a post-COVID student population. Um, Hillcrest staff and students will be equipped with knowledge and resources to mindfully approach challenges by facil facilitating dialogue within the classroom. Um, this will really help address some of the growing number of students who are struggling with anxiety, attention concerns, and emotional regulation. So there, each teacher will be getting a curriculum guide, and there will be 95 children's books to include in each grade level classroom collection. collection sorry. And last is Exploring the World Through VR, and it's um, Newtown Middle School, and virtual reality is VR. Um, it is Mr. Tim Qualley. And the primary purpose of this grant is to allow students to use virtual reality to um, explore science and gain an in-depth understanding of the processes of Earth and space. So students can virtually enter in a full 360 panoramic view another environment anywhere in the world. So specifically in science, this could be the space station viewing the depths of the ocean or possibly seen inside an active volcano. And this leads to purposeful discussions on subjects and subjects and deeper understanding, having used their senses to help gain understanding of what they're seeing. And so we're very excited, and we'll be sure to give you updates over the next year about these exciting grants. Um, thank you to all of those that won and, and those that didn't. You know, we appreciate those grants and hope that you continue to, to write new grants. Um, it, these, these grants really inspire students and make them better learners and um, and, and individuals in our in our community. So congratulations and thank you. Congratulations to our grant winners and thankfully, Mr. Solomon, that ends my report. Congratulations, Dr. Elliott. You made it. We'll try to keep it toned down the rest of the night. Uh, Mr. Cox, good evening. Solicitor report, sir. All I have, Mr. Solomon are the executive sessions that the board held, held on personnel on the 3rd, the 18th, the 26th, the 27th, and the 28th of April, and the executive session that the board held tonight on potential litigation. The executive sessions in April were on personnel. Thank you, sir. Before we move to public comment, I'd like to make a statement on behalf of the school board. Council Rock Board of School Directors, also known as the board, is pleased to provide the following update about the district's search for a new superintendent. With the assistance of the Bucks County Intermediate Unit, also known as the Bucks IU, the board is engaged in a rigorous process to identify the most ideal candidate to serve as our community's next superintendent. This task is among the most important any board will ever undertake. We thank the community for your participation in this process and offer our commitment to identifying a candidate that will move us forward. To date, the board has surveyed the community for feedback on the di desire, desired characteristics of the district's next superintendent and shared those results broadly. We thank everyone who took time to share their perspective. Following the community survey, a customized job posting for the position was developed and shared broadly. The position was shared to local state, regional, and national job boards, and attracted qualified applicants from multiple states. This speaks to the first class reputation of the Council Rock School District, our staff, and the students we serve. The board is engaged in a competitive interview process, working to find a candidate that best personifies the attributes indicated in the survey and through feedback received. The questions and tasks have been verified and reflective of the complex work our superintendent will lead. This board is nearing the completion of the interview process and hopes to provide an update in the very near future with the name and biography of the finalist. As the board approaches the identification of the district's next superintendent, additional communications will follow. The board plans to host a community forum to introduce the finalist and provide an opportunity for questions and answers. We thank the Council Rock community and look forward to sharing more specific information with you soon. From there, we're going to move to public comment.
Just as a reminder, public comment is an opportunity for members of the public to address the board. We ask that you limit your comments to no longer than three minutes. Please consider the fact that there may be young children in the audience or watching this broadcast live on CRTV when speaking. It is our goal to maintain a respectful environment so that the members of our community have an equal opportunity to address the board without interruption. While the board welcomes your ideas and will consider them in deliberating an issue, we may not respond to your comments or questions. Mr. Cox, I'll ask you to be the official timekeeper, please. We have six people on the list. They all have checked their agenda items. So first up is Connor. Just state your full name and what township you're from. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Connor McCormick. I'm from Newtown. I'm a sophomore at Council Rock North, and I'm a member of all three choirs at the school. I've had the privilege to sing for the board twice this year, and I just wanted to talk about my personal experience with the choir program here in Council Rock. Uh, choir has been a huge part of my experience with this district, and it's one of the main reasons why I'm so incredibly grateful to go to school here. Council Rock's music program is, cons is consistently exceptional, and part of the reason why it is so successful is because of the number and diversity of the students who take part in it. I went to Goodno for the entirety of elementary school, and I was required to participate in the elementary school choir program in fifth and sixth grade, just like the kids who are there now. This program introduced me to a whole world I was completely unaware of. Not only could we make music individually, like with the recorders and percussion we were learning about in regular music class, we could also make music together. This is when my love for music and music performance started. My positive experiences in elementary school choir led me to audition for middle masters at Newtown Middle. Uh, middle school choir made me realize that I had to work hard to be better than I already was. And this mentality has transferred perfectly to other aspects of my life. Uh, I have to study for a test the exact same way I had to practice for a solo. By the time my freshman year rolled around, I considered being in choir to be one of my defining traits. Uh, through virtual school to hybrid school, and now thankfully back to normalcy, choir has offered me a consistency that I've desperately needed. This year, I was able to improve my craft, and I now know that I want to pursue a career in music. High school choir has given me a purpose and vision for the future, while middle school choir introduced me to people just like myself. But at the root of it all, it was that mandatory participation in elementary school choir that started it. If it wasn't for those two years, I highly doubt I'd be in the position that I am today. I owe my entire love for music to that original elementary school choir program, and uh, the new decision to remove this program from the curriculum is denying thousands of kids, like myself, the opportunity to try something new and figure out what they really love. Isn't that the point of elementary school? Council Rock was just awarded the NAM Foundation's Best Communities for Music Education Award. This program recognizes districts across the country with exceptional music education programs. Council Rock is consistently in the top 4% of districts in the country for music education. Why would we change this? Uh, Mr. Hidalgo, I know you are a singer and a member of choir yourself, so you know firsthand the camaraderie and uh, transferable skills that choir gives us. Uh, in fact, uh, yourself actually in a 2019 Facebook post, you said, and I quote, I believe that the arts are so important in education and this part of education has a lifetime impact. So I'm counting on you to vote to keep fifth and sixth grade choir as part of the regular elementary school curriculum. Those of you with children, uh, can you imagine if your kid was never exposed to the thing that they love? 30 seconds. Thank you. That's the effect that this, would, that this would potentially have on hundreds of kids every single year. And this isn't a sport. There's no club choir. It's not rock softball. It is not Crusa. The only place that these kids can sing in a choir is through their school. So when you vote on this issue later tonight, please keep in mind that these aren't just numbers on a PDF. These are kids' experiences you're about to take away and kids whose lives you're about to change. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Next up is Simona. Good evening, just state your last name and what township you're from, please. Hello, my name is Simona Avaton and I'm from Newtown Township. Okay, good evening. My name is Simona Avaton and I am a junior at Council Rock North. Next year, I plan on graduating and pursuing a degree so I can work in biomedical research. But I would not have been able to find this passion without the investigation and inquiry-driven environment that STEAM has brought me especially at an elementary level. Therefore, I'm here to voice support for the creation of a STEAM special for elementary school students. A critical part of STEAM is experimentation in the lab, which is based upon inherent human curiosity. With this new program, students would be able to investigate a broad range of scientific subjects alongside their peers with the help of teachers to broaden their knowledge. But not only does STEAM education open children to new topics, it also allows students to think both holistically and analytically in order to come to a rational conclusion based on data in the context of an experiment. 
However, these skills extend even beyond the laboratory. Newly developed critical thinking will allow children to problem solve through obstacles and evaluate evidence in order to make conscious and informed choices for themselves. Also, it is evident that STEAM is one of the fastest growing industries in the US. The US Bureau of Labor Services estimates that jobs in STEAM will grow by 8% in 2029 in comparison to 3.7% in other fields. So exposing to children to these concepts will help lay a foundation that will contribute to future success. Another large part of STEAM education is the diffusion of knowledge from a variety of subjects. Even the acronym itself, which stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Art, and Math, represents the interdisciplinary nature of STEAM. Experiments that range from physics to biology and the arts can help students make connections to natural phenomena or things that go on in their daily lives. With this new knowledge, students would be able to find their passions and even begin pursuing higher education and independent research. Once again, this STEAM special will promote both holistic and analytical thinking while introducing students to new concepts to help them find their passions. With this new program, I'm certain that students will create even brighter futures for themselves and contribute to the ever-growing scientific engine that powers both American and global ingenuity. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is Nathan from Upper Makefield. Good evening. Just state your last name when you gather yourself. Thank you. All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, Nathan Shortino. Uh, I'm an Upper Makefield resident. Uh, I'm also here to, to say a few words in support of the STEAM special for elementary schools. Uh, my wife, Holly, and I live in Washington Crossing. We're parents of a third grader and a fifth grader at Seoul Finestone. Holly is a school psychologist, and I'm a director of clinical operations at a Japanese-based pharmaceutical company. Uh, we've both worked in medical and scientific research for our whole lives, and we're so excited that the board is considering introducing STEAM as a new special in our elementary schools. Uh, I'll first start by saying that the objectives of the current Chromebook special seem very unclear, and my secondhand experience uh, from our kids has been that much of the time is very unstructured. Um, honestly, I think our kids get enough exposure to computers, tablets, phones, and other devices that there's very little added educational value uh, offered by the Chromebook special. By contrast, a well-structured STEAM special would introduce exciting new concepts and practical knowledge to prepare our students for success in the modern world. I'm hopeful that the STEAM curriculum would offer a valuable, hands-on extension of their learning in their core classes, a place where teamwork, problem solving, and critical thinking are encouraged and students have the opportunity to apply the concepts they are learning to real-life solutions together with their classmates. These skills will provide a foundation for Council Rock students to transition to higher education and into meaningful careers. And this is especially important for my daughter and other young women of our community. By placing strong emphasis in a small portion of our budget on STEAM education, we're not only giving Council Rock students a better edu education today, but I truly believe that we're broadening their horizons for greater opportunities in their futures. I strongly encourage all board members to vote in favor of adding a STEAM special. So those are my words. I also have some late breaking remarks from my daughter that came in uh, by text just a few minutes. So remember, she's a third grader at Soul Fine Stone. She says she would enjoy if the fifth special was STEAM. She loves STEAM projects, and Chromebook is the and Chromebook special is the most boring thing of her life. <laughs> she said that uh, that would be really smart to have STEAM as a special. So there's one vote in favor of STEAM special for our elementary school students. I hope that there will be many more before the night is done. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Next up is Christy from Upper Makefield as well. Hi, good evening. Just state your last name, please, for the record. Hi, my name is Christy Hirushka, and I'm from Upper Makefield. They both, the two students from Council Rock High Schools, did a phenomenal job it's amazing what our students are going to grow into as they finish their educations here. I just wanted to speak briefly about the possible adoption of a STEAM special at the elementary level. While my children will not be able to directly benefit from this as they're moving on to Newtown Middle School and Council Rock North, the addition of such a special is necessary for our district to offer programming that's competitive with other surrounding school districts. We know that STEAM-based opportunities allow students to investigate ideas through hands-on learning experiences, 
They allow students to explore ideas in, creative manner, in a creative manner, and they allow them to explore concepts in an interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary fashion across all subject matter. When all of this comes together, students experience growth as learners because they've been able to use the learning that takes place in STEAM-based environments to make sense of the world around them. We also know that many desirable jobs in their future will revolve around science and math. In order for our graduates to be competitive in our future economy, we need to provide them with an education that explores STEAM learning in addition to the traditional subjects that they're already studying. To do this, we need to do what so many other local Bucks County school districts have already done and incorporate STEAM into the elementary schedule on a regular basis through the use of an additional special. Investing in a new STEAM special is really an investment in the students of Council Rock as it will allow them to develop as individuals who are competitive as they pursue a higher education and seek roles in a future job market. It's also a financially intelligent decision for our district. While the small initial tax increase of such a special may cost money up front, it will help the Council Rock communities remain desirable towns for people to move to as the education system will continue to be competitive with other school districts in the surrounding area. We shouldn't need to cut a music program to make a STEAM special happen. After all, the arts are a key component of STEAM. However, we need to focus on raising intelligent students who are prepared for the future job market, and that should be one of our main goals that we have for our children. We need to invest in their futures by providing them with educational opportunities that help them develop the critical thinking 30 seconds. they need to be viable candidates in a global job market. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is Nicole Kahn from Wrightstown. Good evening, everyone. Thank you. Congratulations to all our educator grant winners from CREF. Um, the experience and depth of knowledge that our students will gain is invaluable. So this evening, I, I'm here to discuss the STEAM program. Um, we want all our kids to get the best education in Council Rock and set up for future success. According to the U.S. Department of Education, in an ever-changing, increasingly complex world, it's more important than ever that our nation's youth are prepared to bring knowledge and skills to solve problems, make sense of information, and know how to gather and evaluate evidence to make decisions. Students around the world are developing critical thinking skills, coding, and other technology skills in elementary schools already. In fact, many of our neighboring districts already have a STEAM program, including Central Bucks, Pensbury, Penridge, and Bristol Township, just to name a few. All students will benefit from a STEAM education. The earlier students are exposed to these, to these disciplines, the better. There also appears to be a major disparity in the female to male ratio when it comes to those employed in STEAM related fields. Girls seem to especially thrive when they started at an earlier age. Research shows that girls have tended to abandon careers, paths that don't include helping others. However, STEAM classes have been proven to show young girls, proven to show young girls the overall value of technological jobs in our society. STEAM is project-based, a holistic approach to learning, and addresses many learning styles and modalities, meaning it will offer more opportunities for all of our students to learn and grow. Our students need a consistent standards-based STEAM curriculum from first through sixth grade that is developmentally appropriate, layered from year to year, and taught with fidelity to every child. Having a unique STEAM teacher in class offers efficiencies and overlaps that often don't occur in the regular education classroom. It requires an additional set of time and preparation, much like an art class would. Topics such as co coding, fabrication, and engineering need to be taught by a trained teacher and not just a classroom teacher alone. There are specific manipulatives, technology tools, and robotics that would take an extensive amount of training for every te single teacher to learn and teach as opposed to the STEAM teachers. Not only does the STEAM framework teach students how to think critically, pro solve problems, and use creativity, it prepares students for a workforce that is poised for growth. It is estimated that there will be 3.5 million jobs that use STEAM by 2025, and STEAM or STEM jobs have grown 79% since 1990. 30 seconds. Our world is changing. We need to change with it. We need to prepare our children to be part of, a, to be part of that workforce. 
Even for those students who don't choose a career in one of the STEAM or STEM fields, the skills students will gain from a STEAM education can be translated into almost any career. I strongly urge the board to approve the STEAM special this evening so that all 10 elementary schools can implement the program for the 2022-23 school year, benefiting approximately 5,000 of our district students. I realize this comes with a price tag and a cost of approximately $800,000 per year, but I, but I also- That's three minutes. Investment for our future and our community. I thank you for your time this evening. Thank you. Next up is Wendy Nimwicki from Newtown. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I'm here to ask you to vote to approve the STEAM-based program as a fifth special at the elementary level in place of what is now called computers. A STEAM program is a multifaceted curriculum that promotes confidence, communication, and perseverance. It helps children see how they can apply their knowledge from many different areas and face the challenges presented to be successful. This is an interdisciplinary special that will also address and help recover that learning loss we have consistently heard so much about. Many surrounding districts, including Central Bucks, Pensbury, and Bristol, have all had STEAM-based programs for a number of years. Incoming freshmen at Central Bucks High Schools have had STEAM as a fifth special since the first grade. These programs, they are able to provide a STEAM-based program in addition to a robust elementary, elementary choir programs. They are not mutually exclusive. But let's be honest here. I sat in the committee meetings and heard the widespread support for STEAM programs from all of the board members in attendance. We don't really need to discuss the merits of the program, but ways to deal with the perceived obstacles and challenges to implementing it. So what is holding it back? A STEAM program that costs less than half a percent of the school budget is not determining taxes. To be very clear, the taxes need to increase with or without these programs. That is how taxes work. They need to increase nominally each year to keep up with inflation, and at a 7% inflation, we are already on the lower end. Not increasing taxes means we can't fund the existing budget. And I argue that these programs represent money well spent. Please understand that continuing to table decisions until a new, new superintendent is hired is the equivalent to a no vote on this program. Any further delay means it cannot happen for the 22-23 school year. If that is your intention, that is the work of an ineffective and indecisive board. This program is far too important and overdue to wait any longer. It has been discussed and planned for years. Staff has developed plans and curriculum. They are ready to implement this program and students not cannot continue to wait. Our district cannot continue to fall behind and fail to provide these opportunities to our children. Thank you. Thank you. From there, we're gonna to go to letter H, approval of minutes. Uh, Dr. Thor, would you mind, please? Sure. I move to approve the minutes of the meeting of the Board of School Directors held on April 7th, 2022. Second. Second, Mrs. Marceau. Any comments from the board? Any objections? Hearing none, I'm going to ask the secretary unanimous consent with that, please. From there, we're going to move to the Education Committee. Good evening, Mrs. McKay. Thank you, Mr. Salmon. The Education Committee met on April 25th. We had four agenda items that night, beginning with a change to the middle school schedule, which would require moving the RA period from the start of the day to the end of the day, and there was an extended rationale for doing so. This will be an agenda item tonight. Secondly, discussion and presentation of the Elementary Social and Emotional Learning Program. The work for this program began in 2020 and was uh, necessarily interrupted by COVID. There was a committee of eight to 15 people uh, involved with this work. They surveyed the district to ascertain the needs uh, and four programs were initially identified and then reviewed with one program then being recommended. There followed an analysis of cost and time Elementary counselors reviewed lessons and gave their feedback on the program. The SEL program is not on tonight's agenda due to insufficient support from the board. The third agenda item was a review of our gifted program uh, with the goal of increasing opportunities for math and science content in humanities classes in K-12. In elementary and middle school, it would, uh, it, would necessitate, it would necessitate expanding the current model to include science as well as social studies. And then in high school, all core four areas would be included on an alternating basis. Uh, this is an agenda item for tonight. 
Finally, a presentation on creating an elementary fifth special for STEAM. Adopting this STEAM special would require a change to the elementary master schedule and is an agenda item for tonight. Our next education committee meeting will be on May the 19th, and that concludes my report. I therefore move to approve consent agenda items B through L as contained in the attachment to this agenda. Second. Second, Mr. Tate. Point of, point of order. Dr. Thornton. Not be voting for letter I. Um, letter I is for legal counsel that I have serious issues with the firm. So we can either break it up or we can do, I'll, I'll look to Mr. Cox, but I, I, I will be a no on that part if you want to do consent. Why don't we pull that item out, Mr. Salomon? Take the others, so B through H. And I'd be happy to amend my motion if that would make it cleaner. Please, Mrs. McKay. I, approve, I move to approve uh, agenda items B through H as contained in the report. I have a second. Second. Mr. Tate, what a second. Any comments from the board? B through H. Any objections? All right, hearing none, B through H, unanimous consent. Mrs. McKay. Thank you. I further move to approve items J through L as contained in the attachments to this agenda. Second. 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 Mrs. Marcel, this is J through L. Any further comments from the board? Any objections? Hearing none, I'll ask J through L be marked unanimous consent. Are you going to come back to I, or do you want to do that now? It's up to you. Yeah, I'd be happy to. I move to approve uh, item I as contained in the agenda. A second. Second. I, I don't need a role, I, I don't need a discussion. I just cannot okay. vote for this one. Anybody else would comment? Nope. No. Okay. Okay. Go to a roll call with this, please. Michael Thorward. This is uh, let me. Uh, Empire. This is for letter letter I for. The SSKW contract, I'm sorry, please. Michael Thorward. No. Mary McKee. Yes. Joseph Hidalgo. No. Ed Solomon. No. Michael Roosevelt. No. Bob Hickey. No. Yoda Pally. Abstain, I don't really know much about it. Kristen Marcel? No. And Edward Tate? Yes. Okay, there's two yeses, one abstain and two, four, six. Six, six, two, four, and one abstain. All right, Mrs. McKay, we can move on. Thank you. Thank you. I move to approve the revised health and safety plan as attached to this agenda. Second. Second, Dr. Thorbert. Dr. Lambert, would you like to make a comment, sir? Sorry. Uh, the plan was revised after receiving communication from the Bucks County Department of Health that they were not, no longer requiring school districts to provide notification of um, positive cases within the district and other modifications were made um, that would move towards um, handling this, as, as which has been recommended by the Department of Health um, in similar fashion to we would, would with other communicable diseases. Any further comments from the board? Mrs. Pally, please. So I, I read it. I think it makes sense. I believe we're in the endemic state of the pandemic. Um, the only question that I have, why do you think we should remove the signs that say that people sh should wash their hands properly and sneeze properly? I mean, is that something that should be there anyway? We can certainly leave it in the plan, and I think some of those things happen do happen anyway. I just didn't 
um, I thought it was something that would be removed because it wasn't a part of what we were, had as a requirement of principals having things posted in the building and designated places prior to the pandemic, but there's no harm in it remaining. Mr. Adago, please. So we're not saying we have to remove them. You're just saying it's not required. Correct. An extra step to remove them, so we might as well leave them there. Uh, Mr. Adago? Are, are we still teaching good hygiene to children? Is that part of the curriculum in, in any sense? Yes, we still have uh, good expect expectations for good hygiene with, with our children. Anybody else? Comments? Any objections? Nope. Right, hearing none, I want to ask the Secretary mark that unanimous consent. From there, we move to letter N, middle school schedule revisions. Thank you. I move to approve the middle school schedule revisions as discussed at the April 25th, 2022 Education Committee meeting. Second. Second, Dr. Thorbert. Any comments from the board? Dr. Sanko, would you like to say anything? Um, this reflects a discussion at the last education committee meeting uh, whereby we're proposing we move the resource act activity period from the front end of the day to uh, the back end of the day in the middle schools, both middle schools. Thank you, sir. Any further? Mr. Tate, please. Thank you, Mr. Solomon. Um, for the sake of the public, um, we had extensive discussion at Education Committee about this proposal, and I know some people are concerned about it, but I think their concerns would be at least partially put to rest by watching the recording of the Education Committee meeting. Um, that's you know, one of the benefits of moving our work to committees is that we have time to devote to extended discussions. But they don't happen here in the boardroom, so I think that might leave the public sometimes puzzled as to why we're acting on, on a major decision without a lot of discussion. Um, so I just urge people to go to the Council Rock YouTube channel and see the Education Committee meeting if they're interested, and, and a lot of other committee meetings uh, you might find interesting. Anybody else? Mr. Odago, please. Yeah, thank you for all the work and thank you for leading it, Dr. Sanko. Um, with this work over the last year, two years, we started talking about this a while ago. Um, I was not at the meeting on Monday, the whatever it was, the 21st or whatever. Um, but what I would say is if I go back and I reference the, the motion says go back to the recording. So I'm not seeing anything really in writing. Um, but I can listen to the recording, you know, that happened. Uh, and there was some discussion there. And what I saw was kind of like in tennis, you serve, the person hits back, and we served the ball to the community on that Monday, and it was returned uh, with some, some concerns regarding music, which I think we've had other, we're gonna have music and, and education time coming up a lot tonight if we're gonna have that discussion. If I go to the PDF from the academic committee meeting, if that's what we call it, we call it education. Um, music's only in there once, provides our music program with additional instructional time, that's it. And so they're doing it at the beginning of the year, beginning of the school day now, and now we're gonna switch it to the end, and then there's a conflict between um, them choosing between athletics or, ed, or uh, music. Apparently that's one of the conflicts. Um, I'm trusting our administration that this is the right thing to do. I'm just wondering if there's another way to thread the needle when it comes to this particular one. It's middle school for two years. Is this exactly the only way we can do it uh, now that we see that there are concerns of other people? Um, the other point I had to, that I want us to think about is some of these motions are all tied together to the fifth special. So maybe not this one at the middle school level, but the schedule change at the elementary school level is actually tied to the fifth special. Um, uh, and it's funny that we should say fish special because maybe it will be replaced and it'll just be the fourth special that's steam. I mean, there's so many different ways we can do this. And I'm jumping around, which is normal, so to, don't get surprised. So as far as the middle school uh, change in the RA period, I'm not sure I can totally support that today. I'm probably in the minority, but uh, I think there's a lot of concern there um, that I haven't quite come to grips yet, even after listening to the recording, because that was the first thing at the meeting, right? 
and you spoke well about it, why we should do it. So I don't know if you, anybody wants to try to convince me, but that's where I'm at. Thank you. If I may, Mr. Hildalgo, the you're right. There, there will be or could be a conflict by moving it to the end of the day, but it's no different than the conflicts that the students have right now at the beginning of the day. So during that period, students have an opportunity to make up a math test, for example, or work with an English teacher or participate in a club activity during RA right now where it is. The variable, the only variable that changes is the athletic variable at the end of the day. Um, so that could provide a conflict for some students. And we took a look at our largest number of participants, our, our sport, our sport team with the largest number of participants at both middle schools, and that is track. Uh, and we have in excess of 100 students in track in one uh, middle school and near 100 students participating in track in the, second middle, in the second middle school. And when we look at the possible conflicts that may occur uh, between a student who participates in track as well as uh, music, there's a maximum possibility of having five interrupted uh, um, music lessons or participating in music during the end of the day with Ari in that location. Uh, and those conflicts would come only when that track team or that sports team, and I'm using track as an example, has an away contest. Well, thank you, and that's why I appreciate not being, I apologize, but that not every, you know, these, this is where I think the rubber hits the road, and there should be some discussion here, especially uh, with the concerns. So I, I don't think, uh, you know, thinking and listening to what you're saying that I have a problem uh, going forward with it, the, uh, but it's also something that we could reverse or in, in future years. But you want to implement this next year, and, it's, and it costs nothing. The board. Yes. Okay. And, and I just might add um, that example I used with the track team at one middle school, there are 11 students that would populate both the sports and the music program. And this will be a big deal or could be a big deal to those 11 students. And at the second middle school, there are nine students uh, that that's true for right now. But again, when we modeled this out, and I'll ask Dr. Elliott if she can jump in on this uh, as well. But when we looked at this and, and did some benchmarking, we, we looked at our, our track team because it has the largest number of participants. And we looked at the number of students that are participating athletically as well as musically. Thank you, Dr. Sanko. And I think I'll add, you know, the middle school administration did a lot of research on students that are in both programs. But the other key piece here is the music programs happen during the RA period Athletics happen after school. So there is no conflict except for when it's an away game and a student has to leave early for that away game. So they're still going to have access to the music just on the yeah. days that they're not away games. So I know you guys fully vetted this out, and I, I trust that was the right, right thing. So I'm, I'm good now. Thank you. Okay. Is there any objections? All right. Hearing none, I'm going to ask. Secretary Market, you know, consent. Mrs. McKee, continue on, please. Thank you. I move to approve the elementary schedule revisions as discussed at the April 25th, 2022 Education Committee meeting. Second. Second, Dr. Thorwart. Any comments from the board? Mr. Odago, please. Uh, similar to the last thing, but this time now we're talking about fifth and sixth grade course. Is, and is that going to go away as a mandatory course? Currently, currently, our fifth and sixth graders participate in chorus. It is not a voluntary program. With the proposed schedule, we, the, nobody is talking about getting rid of chorus. Nobody is talking about removing chorus. What we're suggesting is that we're going to recapture those choral minutes for grades five and six and relocate chorus somewhere else during the day. Uh, we don't have an exact landing spot. At this point, we continue to investigate where it would be. The, what would change uh, for the student is currently all of our fifth graders and sixth graders participate in chorus uh, as a mandatory program. What would change, it would become voluntary. So if you're a student who doesn't like to sing, 
and we offer that choral program for fifth and sixth grade, you can choose either to participate or not participate. I got the mic, Mr. Odago. I'm not 100% um, convinced uh, that we can, that is there, there's no other solution. Uh, other way, okay, what I was saying is, again, this is tied to fifth special. So we can't do this. Uh, we have to schedule, do this schedule chain in order for you to implement the fifth special motion, pretty much. You have to find the minutes. Is, am, am I getting this correct? All right, so let's take a look right now at, currently we offer four specials at the elementary school, art, music, library, phys ed. And let's, if you just follow along with me, you have one of those specials, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Right now at the elementary school, Friday in this scenario would be a non-special day. If we add STEAM on Friday, you then would have your fifth special. In order to get that fifth special to fit in there, we would be taking minutes away from our English language arts block, our ELA time. So the challenge becomes if we have the fifth special that pulls minutes away from ELA, and now if we add core, now if we keep chorus where it's located, we are double dipping into the minutes of the ELA time. So we'd be taking 45 minutes out of English language, language arts for uh, STEAM and the 35 minutes out of language arts for chorus. And that's why we're proposing moving, not eliminating, not getting rid of, but, but providing chorus in a way that kids have a choice to participate or not. Am I the only one with questions? Uh, we attended the meeting. We were there. We, we heard this already. Anybody else? Mr. Roosevelt. Dr. Sanko, thank you very much for adding additional details to, this con to these agenda items. I believe that they both alleviate concern as well as um, really capture, I guess, what's being proposed and I appreciate this additional time. Thank you. Dr. Sanko, I think you made the statement, there's only so many minutes of the day in the elementary schedule. It's packed full. If you want the STEAM schedule, if you want the STEAM special, that's the alternative. I mean, we can always remove gym or library or something else to keep the option knowing that we have only one day to do it. So the minutes are what they are, and we discussed this at length at the Education Committee. So is there any objections from the board at this? Okay. Madam Secretary, roll call, please. Marion McKee? Yes. Joseph Adago? No. Ed Solomon? Yes. Mike Roosevelt? Yes. Bob Hickey? Yes. Yoda Pally? Yes. Kristen Marcel? Yes. Edward Tate? Yes. Michael Thorward? Yes. Motion passes 8-1. Letter P, Mrs. McKay. I move to approve the gifted support services as discussed at the April 25th, 2022 Education Committee meeting. Second. Oh, Mr. Roosevelt, I think, won that one. Any comments from the board? Mr. or I'm sorry, Dr. Thorwart. Um, I'm excited to see this. I don't have any problems with it, Dr. Lambert. Um, this is one of two reasons I started coming to school board meetings a very long time ago. It's a long time coming. Thanks. That's all. Anybody else? Any objections? Joe, you good? My daughter's in a gifted program. I'm for it. Okay, good. Well, <laughs> I mean, yeah. You just want to make sure you're good. Better than just having social studies, I'll tell you that. Okay. Better than having social studies. Uh, hearing no objection, let's mark that unanimous consent. I like social studies. 
Um, Mrs. McKee, please. And here we go. I move to approve the addition of a STEAM special at the elementary <clears throat> level for grades one through six at the start of the 2022-2023 school year with a pilot curriculum to be reviewed during the 2022-2023 school year and the final curriculum approved in the spring of 2023. Second. Second, Mr. Tate. If, if I may. Dr. Thorward, please. Um, Mrs. Pally and I went back and forth yesterday and today a couple times. Um, we all want this special. I want this special. I come from a STEAM background. Um, and we went back and forth, and, and I, you, know, you can chime in whenever you want. Um, I want this. I want to approve it tonight. Um, and I, I, what I told Yoda was, I also want our next superintendent to have his or her hand on this and on the till when this goes through. Um, we talked, and I, I believe it was your idea then. Well, could we amend the motion to say subject to review of the next superintendent um, as, 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 in light of Mr. Salomon's statement that we are very close now. Um, I'd like to approve it now, make it a priority for the next superintendent now, but I'd like them to have final blessing on, on moving forward. So, um, uh, I, Dr. Elliott, no, no, um, no offense to you, but as you exit, we've got somebody coming in and, uh, you know, we might as well start this one fresh. So, uh, I, that was a great compromise, and, and I, I would just ask if the motion could be amended to that. Mrs. McKay. Thank you. I would find that a, a friendly amendment. I, I really want to ensure, though, that we're fully committed to doing this. We don't go back on it. Hence the approval tonight. That's, that, that was exactly what we talked about. Understood. I find that a friendly amendment. Mr. Tate. Since I second, I'll, I'll agree with Ms. McKee that it is a friendly amendment. I will also say that I think everything in the district will be under review by the new superintendent. Uh, with the exception of some legal contracts where we're bound, I, I think that that's what we should expect from our new superintendent. I'm thrilled that we're moving forward. So thank you for working out a compromise. Mrs. Marceau. Um, I just wanted to try. I just wanted to chime in because, um, unfortunately, I was ill the night of the Education Committee meeting from a bug that was going around my house. And so I just wanted to share um, that I listened to that meeting and I appreciated all of the conversation about the STEAM special, um, as it has been something that we have been talking about for a while, and Mr. Salomon and I have talked about this probably too much. So I just wanted to thank everyone for their work on this and the dialogue I am supportive of the um, change from the both of you, and I appreciate both of you working on that together. So thank you for uh, your great boardsmanship. Thank you. I'm going to have to ask you to chime in, Mrs. Pally, because obviously you compromised on this. So I think STEAM is something that everybody wants. I mean, all the parents. It's hard to think of like a parent who is, who is against it. Uh, it will. It's a great for our children, and no matter where kind of background we're coming into the room, we all want the best for our children, and we all say we have to put our children first. And so... In order to make this uh, voting in tonight, I think that the compromise we came up with is minor because it's still committed, we're fully committed to the STEAM program. Anybody else? Mr. Roosevelt, please. Thank you very much, administration. Thank you, colleagues. I am very excited about STEAM. As somebody else who has a STEAM background, this is something that I campaigned on. This is something that all of us, I believe, heard from our constituents that they want. We've heard public comment about this, uh, and I'm excited that the administration has found a way to make it happen and to present us with the option to do it and has heard the community and heard the board. I think this is a victory not only for the school district and the kids that get to go through it, but the community as a whole. So I'm very excited about this, have full commitment for it, and agree with the friendly amendment. Thank you. Mr. Hickey, please, sir. I agree with the comments that everybody said. I mean, however, um, I did want to point out, and I'm hoping there is a solution for it, that you know there is a cost to every program, and that 
program as presently presented is approximately 1.2 million with hiring 7.8 extra staff. It is my hope as we go forward that with this, and I am fully supportive of it, that we have the homegrown talent here with our teachers that are per currently employed in our elementary schools and you know, possibly in our middle schools that can take a hold of this program and move it forward where we don't have to necessarily look outside the district for the talent that we need. Uh, but I am in full support, but I said in fairness to the public that is listening, and you have to keep in mind that 70% of the public do not have kids in this school, and they, in fairness to them, they need to know what the actual cost is, and if it's a 7.8, round that up to eight, at $100,000 plus benefits, that's 1.2 million. And I just want to point that out. I'm, I don't want to be a killjoy. I'm in favor of it. And like I said, my hope is, is as we move forward, that we can find a homegrown talent and bring that cost down a little bit and you know make it successful at a lower price. Thank you, Mr. Hickey. Dr. Elliott, I, I just had a conversation quickly with Doc, uh, Mr. Cox. I just want to make sure you, the administration, understands it's easy to say what motion compromise we're talking about. What are the marching orders for the administration? So I don't want nothing lost before we do a vote here. Um, could I expound on that a little? Please, bit? I would appreciate it. I mean, uh, are I, you clear? Well, and, I would appreciate a deeper and, and Miss, Mrs. Mrs. Kelly will smack me if I'm if I'm wrong. <laughs> so, um, don't promote violence at the board. Li listen, um, and it's fine. Um, we have to Mr. Hickey's point. We have folks at South that I'm aware of that work with NASA. We have folks in Holland Elementary that do NASA work. Um, they're gonna, if, if they want these positions, they're gonna get extracted um, from them and, and move up or move over, but that, that looks good from a district standpoint, and, and I'm hoping the next superintendent will capitalize on that experience. Um, in one of our motions coming up, we're about to do personnel actions where we're releasing a tremendous number of long-term subs because COVID is over. And anybody we take out of a classroom will have to be backfilled. I, I, I get that. So to your point, Mr. Hickey, we could be backfilling with starting salary teachers versus seasoned teachers. And we've moved our seasoned, very experienced STEM teachers. My, my son is, is benefiting immensely from it to, to get to your, your, your point. And we're about to, re there's, there's a pool. We, we have a pool of, of talent that's been in our buildings for the past year and a half. So my, the friendly motion was, is we're going forward. Um, the poor next superintendents, I mean, because we're do potentially delaying this a couple of weeks, not months, not years, a couple of weeks. But we have the talent to pick up and, and move forward again from that. I, I, the talent's in house. We don't have to hire it, we've got it to keep things moving. So hopefully that, Bob, that, that helps you uh, immensely. And then, but we will have to backfill positions, but until the, the next superintendent lays it out, you know, you know, we're, we're, we're just gonna sidestep for a couple of weeks. Uh, again, a couple of weeks. I, I don't think this is for very long and it allows the, the next leader of our district to put their hand on the, on the till. So does that help? Oh, it helps. I mean, I, I'm good. Like I said, I'm good with it. I'm always just looking for thinking outside the box as the term is used. She's going to attempt to speak here. Dr. Elliott, please. Thank you. So I just want to make sure I'm clear um, with this friendly amendment. One of the things that we communicated with the board at the Education Committee meeting on April the 25th was in order to move forward with this, one of the first things that we need to do is begin the recruiting and hiring process of the potential STEAM teachers. What we could do as an administration, if the board is okay with this, is we could post for anticipated positions, which we, we typically do when we anticipate that we'll have openings, but we're waiting for some finalization with the budget. So that allows us to begin that process, but not actually hire anyone until such time as um, you know, given the timeline that's been presented tonight, the new superintendent is able to begin to weigh in on this or we know where we are with the budget and, and what we're doing. So if, um, if that's okay with the board, um, 
as an administration, we can go forward and then post as anticipated positions. I, I, and I'm, I'm looking to my board colleagues. I'm okay with that as long as you keep that rec open, right? Right? Don't close it. Um, leave it open because the, the the next person here may tweak the job descriptions again and ch or change and or change the pool. Um, you know, new leaders tend to attract people. So, um, you know, so let's, I, I, don't, I don't have a problem with, you know, collecting resumes, but I don't know that we want to go further than that. Um, again, a couple weeks, so. Mr. Tate, with a finger up, thank you. I um, anticipated that the, that the heaviest lift of implementing this program would be making personnel decisions. Um, so I wouldn't want to hold up that process beyond what Dr. Elliott just described, which is moving forward with the process and simply not making the hires. So that's a little different than you suggested, Mike, of, of collecting resumes. But, but yeah, I think, I think we shouldn't impede the process um, to the point where, as Dr. Elliott said, we don't make the hires until we have the budget and the new superintendent can approve the hires. I, I actually think the biggest hurdle will be developing the curriculum, but we, we, we can disagree on that. I, mean, I, I think we've got a, a monstrous pool of, of talent available, so. Mr. Daga. Yeah, and I would say, you just don't close the, the, the opening for the pool, you know, the collection time until you know, we leave it open-ended for the time being, resumes, collecting the resumes. Um, I just wanted to make a general statement that since I got on the school board, I've also been very big proponent of, of STEAM. It was STEM and we made it STEAM um, because of my background and my, uh, my education. It's very important to me and it works in everyday life. So it works in many, many ways. So I see the value in it. And all I would ask is if we're developing curriculum and stuff like that, to look at not just a fifth special where we're putting in a half hour a day, but how do we integrate this into the other instructional time where you're actually satisfying the instructional time for the different subjects, but you can tweak in there maybe an assignment here or there that explores and crosses over uh, the disciplines in order to uh, enrich the, the regular education we're getting to. I don't think it stops at... Um, uh, at a fifth special, but really, how do we integrate this throughout the day, you know, every day? Thank you, Mr. Doggo. Uh, Ms. Taylor, Dr. Elliott, what, what additional, I think we talked about this last board meeting or at a committee meeting, what additional type of certifications would, would enable a person to apply for this job? I mean, is a, is a regular elementary school teacher, are they available or do they have to go through some level of STEM certifications or certificates or anything like that? We haven't met yet to talk about the postings or the requirements. I mean, obviously, because we're waiting for decisions and direction, but there's not a special certification. There is an endorsement that would, um, you know, be an added benefit for candidates. But as many of the board directors have said tonight, we have an incredible talent pool here. I don't think there'll be any shortage of interest um, when it is posted. Thank you, and I appreciate that. And I, as I said at the education meeting, I've said probably for several years now, this is this is a long time coming to Council Rock. I think we should have probably had this 10 years ago on it to be fair to, to the network and our counterparts out there throughout the county and elsewhere. Uh, we do have a great, talented group here. Some are still in the audience. Some got a lot of money from CREF tonight that are going to run programs in our schools that will entice the kids to want to do this. Um, I've been very lucky to have Holland Elementary School is for my kids who have promoted STEAM for the last X amount of years and the teachers have embraced it. We have robots running around and kids coding and I want that at every school at every, you know, in our elementary level. And I want it consistent and I want the kids to enjoy it and get them early. Uh, this is exciting time, really is. So unless there's, but as I said at the meeting, I just don't want this to be a checkbox. I want this to be a quality Council Rock job. So um, we got some work to do, as I keep saying. Uh, is there any objections to the to the, the new motion, or would you? I, it has to be restated, I believe. I think it would benefit everyone if it was clarified a bit. Mrs. McKee, do you have it, or do you want? I will 
do my best to wordsmith this on the fly here. Um, let me see. I move to approve the addition of a STEAM special at the elementary level for grades one through six at the start of the 2022-2023 school year with a pilot curriculum to be reviewed during the 2022-2023 school year and the final curriculum approved in the spring of 2023 with the caveat that the succeeding superintendent has input into such program. Does that satisfy Dr. Thorwart? Yeah, I want him to bless, him or her to bless it. Um, I, I, I don't want to, I, I, you know, again, we're talking a couple of weeks, but yeah, I, you're, you're catching the spirit of it. I mean, I, I think we've, Rob, have we directed the administration well enough? Yes, I think the main question is whether Dr. Elliott has clear instructions. And I, um, I mean, we, we sometimes have these motions subject to solicitor review. Isn't Ms. Pally and Dr. Thorwart, Thorwart really what you're saying here is that this motion is subject to review by the new superintendent? Perfect. Ms. McKee, is that okay? Thank, thank you, that works. Second for the fourth second. time. For the fourth for time, Mr. Second, yeah. That's good. I appreciate you hanging in there and counting up to four. Uh, any further comment from the board? Any objections? We all roll call, roll call on this one, don't we? No, oh, I can. Let's I, I work for the secretary, but it's fine. Sorry. <laughs> Dr. Thorpe would like a roll call. Please do a roll call. Sure. Joseph Haldago? Yes. Ed Solomon? Yes. Mike Roosevelt? Yes. Bob Hickey? Yes. Yoda Pally? Yes. Kristen Marcel? Yes. Edward Tate? Yes. Michael Thorward? Absolutely. And Miriam McKee? Yes. I think it passed 9 0. Uh, my sincere thank you to Ms. Mrs. Pally and Dr. Thorward for proving once again that we can work together for a compromise and a common goal. So thank you. Uh, and Ms. Pally, while you're there, Bucks County IU update, please. Last meeting was on April 19th, but uh, the board has been spending quite a bit of time at uh, the Bucks IU unit in uh, Donnestown because that's where we do all the interviews for the next superintendent. Um, and a lot of the um, updates that I'll have is really uh, informational because the, the board meeting is a lot of like everyday business that is not of interest to the majority of the people here. Um, if talking about STEAM, there is the Fab Lab Center that offers STEAM programs and is, uh, is part of the uh, Bucks IU. So they offer STEAM programs on Saturdays and there are still openings for people that want to sign up. And there's going to be a Fab Lab summer camp, uh, eight weeks that begin June 20th. And uh, people can sign up for one week or more. The only downside is that it's located in Warminster, so someone has to drive their children there and back. Um, also, there is um, a program called Bucks County Career Pathways. This is a partnership between school districts, post-secondary business and community members, and it provides Bucks County students with career awareness and exploration for different like career paths. And I can have, I have the websites for everything that I can uh, provide for the minutes. Um, it's free for all the school districts. And I know that all three tech schools participate, but it is also available for students that plan to go to college. Uh, it, they have onboarded 50 businesses and they offer over 100 experiences and they plan to add 50 more businesses by this fall. So finally, I think Dr. Elliot had spoken about that in the past, but I just want to say one more time that the Bucks IU, they announced the 2022 STEM Design Challenge Awards, and there were two competitions, one for grades four and five, and one for grades six and eight. So it was like elementary and middle school. So there were 127 elementary teams and 87 middle school teams. And 
they gave six awards for its category. And guess what? Cancer Rock got four of the six awards at the elementary school and two of the six awards in the middle school. And without even have a STEM program yet. That's <laughs> awesome. So congratulations to all the winners, of course. And the next IU um, board meeting is on May 16th because May 17th is election day that we normally meet on Tuesdays. Thank you, ma'am. From there, we're going to go to MBIT. Is it Mr. Hickey, Mrs. Moore? Oh, she's pointing the finger. Mr. Hickey, please. Uh, actually, uh, we're fortunate here. Once again, Mr. Demetz did a wonderful job of telling what's happening at MBIT and the successes that they've had. Um, Ms. Marcel and I both participated in the Committee of the Whole meeting uh, earlier this week uh, remotely. Uh, we couldn't be there. Um, unfortunately, we don't have our regular committee meeting until next week, so from what I reported last month, I really don't have a whole lot to do, you know, report. We've just been going over, you know, the budget and everything else, but um, nothing's been finalized. Like I said, we'll have more to report after next week. Okay, thank you, sir. We're going to go down to CREF after a wonderful evening of prizes yeah. and awards. and Mr. Not, Tate. not much more to be said other than um, I think We've seen some amazing innovation and creativity from our teachers. The robots at Holland, I think, the first ones were bought with uh, CREF grant money. Um, and, uh, you know, our teachers have been doing STEM. They're good at it. And giving them more time and resources, I think, is a wonderful thing. And we, we saw that tonight. The only other thing I'll mention about uh, CREF is uh, you may get tired of me talking about the golf outing, but it's June 20, and if anybody wants to sign up a foursome, please see me, not Ms. Marcel, because she, in the, at this point, enjoys a wide margin in our contest for signing up the most uh, foursome. So um, please do support the golf outing. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Policy Committee, Dr. Thorward, please. Um, we have canceled the policy meeting that would have been this coming Monday. Um, there is a policy lingering. Uh, Mr. Harris has a wellness policy. Um, budget kind of took a higher score than that. So we will have one in the, in, in the coming weeks. Go ahead and... Yes, uh, Dr. Thor, we will have a, a board policy for review uh, following discussion with the Food Service Advisory Committee. So one of the functions of the Food Service Advisory Committee serves as the, the default wellness committee. So we want to get those ideas and requirements to them to get an actionable policy to the board. Yeah, that, that's fine. This, this one should not be confrontational at all. So we'll, we'll get to it when we, when we need it. All right, thank you, sir. From there, we're going to move to Finance Committee. Mr. Aldago, please. Thank you, Mr. Solomon. Uh, the Finance Committee met on April 21st, and at that meeting, we had a lot of housekeeping items that were uh, put up for consent agenda tonight, uh, approving the middle bucks MBIT proposed budget resolution, um, food services management uh, company renewal contract, uh, accepting the Giant Feeding School Kids Program Awards, uh, food service equipment purchases, and some van purchasing uh, discussion. And then we had some discussions on the budget update from Mr. Harris, very good, uh, the wellness policy that was just spoke about, and uh, a transportation subsidy update. Uh, so with that, if you have nothing to add, then I'm Go ahead, Mr. Harris. Yeah, Mr. Hidalgo, I'd like to add uh, that on items H and I, uh, the, the board did authorize me to purchase a, a gently used 2016 Ford van, which is part of the bid specification. And in order to take possession of that used vehicle, we needed to m execute the purchase prior to the board meeting. So we're asking for a ratification of that action. And to provide some clarity with the bid, approval of the van bid award, if you look at the PDF, uh, none of the bidders can guarantee delivery. So uh, it would not be wise for me to uh, recommend an award of a bid to a particular company who cannot uh, produce a vehicle whose rubber is actually on the lot. So we are exploring other options regarding used vans, and we continue to take 
uh, calls from vendors who have gently used vans similar to the ones that we presented to the board previously. So uh, with the board's indulgence, uh, you, we may have an action to ratify in June to satisfy the second of the two vans that have been approved. So I just wanted to clarify that, that that's, the, the board is approving the, the bid tally and, uh, and ratifying the action, and then uh, I hope to have an additional van uh, by June. Any other additional comment from the board? All right, make right. the motion, Joe. Mr. Harris, is that was that H you just were speaking to, Mr. Harris? Yes, sir. The, the cost would be not to exceed fifty-six thousand dollars, which would be the, uh, the the lowest bid, including uh, any any ancillary costs for paperwork and a uh, extended warranty. I'm I'm sorry to to belabor this, Mr. Harris, and put you on the spot. Is that um, is that vehicle listed on the PDF? <laughs> You'll notice that the proposed unit prices are north of that. And given the market conditions, we, I wanted to give the board the best chance to purchase the best vehicle possible. Just for my clarification, are we talking about the 2016 van or the van bid award on H? We are currently talking about the van bid award on H. Okay. Is the board purchasing any of those four vehicles listed on that PDF? The board is purchasing the vehicle on uh, number two, Fred Bean Chevrolet, uh, the 2016 Ford Transit. Uh, price is $40,083, and that's in the second motion. Got it. Thank you for that, Mr. Harris. Sorry to belabor it. Is the motion good as it is? No, you need to read the motion, sir. Need to read the motion. Oh, yeah, I'll read the motion. Just want to make sure I don't have to modify what's on there as a consent agenda item, right? All right, and just to say, the next board meeting is the 12th of May. Um, with that, let me go back to it. I move to approve consent agenda items B through J as contained in the attachment to this agenda. Second. Second, Mrs. Marceau. Any further comments from the board? Any objections? Hearing none, I ask the secretary to mark that unanimous, please. Continue, Mr. Odago. Um, I'll just go with reading the motion. Uh, I move to approve the proposed final general budget 2022-2023. Mr. Harris. You need a second. Second, Mrs. Pally. You have a presentation, sir, correct? Ladies and gentlemen of the board, community, thank you for the opportunity to present the general fund proposed final budget. This is a ceremonial vote uh, which will meet the board's statutory requirement to move to the final budget proposal which, will, which the board will entertain on the 16th of June. Um, we are currently looking at a 2.4% tax levy, but I am cautiously optimistic that we can get that cost down uh, with current current proposals, including the fifth steam special at a 7.8. This is the timeline, and we're already to the far right. We, we are in May, we're approving the proposed final, and then in June, you approve the final budget. The update, the impacts in general fund budget, this is a slide from last time. We're still TBD on, on the Crespo Collective Bargaining. We are scheduled to meet with, with that bargaining unit next week. Uh, transportation contractor, uh, Mr. Ziegler is in the audience, or was in the audience earlier. Uh, he, he bids his regards. They've already had meet and greets with existing employees. Uh, those selected costs have been baked into the transportation budget. Insurance renewals, they will come before the board for consideration uh, next week. We, have, we will have a guest with our insurance broker to discuss uh, additional optional coverages, but uh, early estimates, it's, it's, it's about $50,000 more than it was last year. Uh, and a majority of that is our property liability because we've added square footage to some of our buildings and the increases to our cyber liability. Uh, we spent about $1.1 million in insurance total per year. Energy agreements are out to bid, and Mr. Taylor and his team are very uh, fleshing that out quite nicely. Uh, staffing, we will have an update on our elementary enrollment after June 1st, so any additional elementary sections that we might need uh, to add 
we will, we will advise the board accordingly. The attrition and retirements have been added into the budget, as well as the new initiatives, STEAM, math, ELD, and gift of support. What is in the budget? We, we propose to maintain our current staffing. We propose to have 7.8 FTE full-time equivalents for STEAM, two FTEs for English language development, two, one, one FTE for math support, three FTEs for special ed, and we're also looking to include the two counselors from the PCCD grant that were previously on uh, the, that state grant funded money. We are also looking to provide the gifted support. We are looking to implement the salary breakage, which was approximately $1.1 million. Uh, we're looking to implement the SEL program, or at least have an allocation in the budget for it for whatever the board decides to approve. Uh, we're, the software upgrades, the transportation contract costs, the complement, the contemplation of capital borrowing for projects now and in the future, as well as the continuation of the capital transfers for summer work. Uh, we, it also does include a $1.2 million budgetary reserve, and this is allowable under PDE regulations for any unforeseen expenses that the board may see, deem fit pending the administration's recommendation of a budgetary transfer. And then there's a continuation of current, current professional substitute rates. And uh, Ms. Taylor and I have, have, have been watching that, that ball very carefully. Uh, our, our, our fill rate continues to be high, and uh, we have very few complaints from, from our teachers, and that means there are few, fewer kids in cafeterias and auditoriums uh, being supervised by groups of teachers who uh, we can't provide coverage for. I'll stop there for questions. Hearing none. Mandated costs. I, I just wanted to remind the board and the community that we do have a significant amount of mandated costs. And the hyperlink does take you to a document that was, uh, that was delved out by, carved out by the Bucks County Intermediate Unit a couple of years ago. And it does detail some of the mandated costs and gives the, the state and, and federal mandate, that, the law that supports it. PEASERS is one of our largest cost increases contractual costs for, for, our, for our labor and services, fringe benefit costs. Fortunately, we are flat on, on our medical spend this year. Charter school tuition continues to be a, a wild card in our, in our budget calculations, and we are optimistic that several students who enjoy placement in charter school or cyber charter school, uh, and this is just my plug, there's no education like a Council Rock education. I think uh, the, the parents will find that the return to normalcy will be a, a, a welcomed uh, option for students who are currently in charter school or cyber charter school. Special education expenses are also a wild card. Other mandated costs, anything that says shall, the district shall, school boards shall, teachers shall, in any policy code or statute, we don't have an option. If it says may, we have an option. And Council Rock has, has a, a, a tendency to, to include the mays and remove the maze when, when it's no longer prudent. And then examples for shall provide, which, which is non-public transportation, safety and security needs, homeless supports, et cetera. And you can see additional detail in the, P, the PA mandate document below. Questions on mandated costs? Okay, the proposed tax levy stands at 2.4%. That was the feedback that I got at the last board meeting or the finance meeting, understanding that any additional revenues or salary breakage that we could entertain would then lower the tax levy. So currently, at, at the time of print, okay, so there are a couple of updates that, that I'm, I'm pleased to report to the board. Um, the, we, the impact of the taxpayer for the average a taxpayer is $123 a year. So your tax bill, if your property is valued at $38,800, and that's the number on your tax bill, not on your mortgage, uh, your, your tax bill is going up approximately $123.67. Questions there? We decided to use the, to pay for the initiatives in the budget, we're going to use attrition to pay for additional staff. And if you see the retirement breakage, there's about 1.1, almost $1.2 million. And at the bottom line, all, all of the things that we talked about earlier in the budget, the additional cost to the 23, 2023 budget salary and benefits was approximately $408,000. So due to the retirements, replacing those teachers who are exiting, staff members who are exiting at a higher, higher salary and replacing them with a lower salary, the understanding is that even if 
a, a current member of the staff were to move into some of those positions, we would replace those staff members with a, a lesser salary. That's the assumption we're making here. I'll pause here for questions. Comparison of the 21-22 approved budget to the 22-23 budget. If you look at the total revenues, they're going up approximately 4.018%. That includes the 2.4 real estate tax. Uh, we're, 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 we will be enjoying an additional transportation subsidy, and we are forecasting a slight increase in basic ed and special ed. Those are two wild cards that the, the Pennsylvania legislature still has to weigh in on, and if the governor can get the budget approved as pre previously released in February, the district stands to gain about $2 million in basic ed funding. I'm, I'm, my understanding is dead on arrival, but just like compromises were made tonight, you never know what can happen to Harrisburg. So the, the largest area of, of increase are the 300s and 400s, that's property service and the purchase services. We have the forecast subpay increase in computer repairs, as well as the professional services increase for custodial, and we are forecasting a, a an inflationary cost increase for utility and, and fuel. We're hoping to leverage that with the bids, bid specs that we, we, we've offered, but you never know. We, we're, not in the, we're not in the business of buying uh, fuel futures. Uh, we're not Southwest Airlines, so uh, <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't want to do that kind of speculation. Uh, and besides, it would be illegal for schools to do that. Um, the supplies, the cost of goods and additional supported technology. I want to point out to the board that there was a, a, a mistake, and I own it fully, that there was a, an expense that was included in this uh, $643,000 increase. Uh, so if you bring down to the bottom line, the budget is, the difference in the budget from the expenses to the revenues is a delta of about $308,000. If you back out, the, the oversight on my part, that delta has now gone down $240,000. So we're talking about $50,000 difference between revenue and spend if, you, if the board were to decide to enact a 2.4% tax increase. Uh, I, I think that is uh, quite admirable, uh, the work of the cabinet and, 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 and the board to give input and governance about what should live in the budget, what should not live in the budget. So. Um, at the time this was released, it did, was a, a delta of $308,000. If you recall, this time last month, we were about $5 million. And the reason why that has changed is we've now moved from our projection model into our actual budgetary request model so that once all of those items are built in, it's easier to spit this number out. It, it, it is quite a, a laborious, uh, you sit and watch the Excel wheel go around and around and around on your computer. So it's easier to forecast it and be high and say, you know, we, we, we really need to consider the tax increase. Now we're closer and we're, it's, it's, a, it's a better number. So the board did ask for me to sharpen my pencil. We certainly sharpened the pencil and did make a few additional adjustments to the budget. Questions? Uh, Mr. Harris, thank you. That's um, extremely helpful. The figure on there that's about 309,000, you say it's actually now down to about 50 some thousand. Correct. Does that need to be zero when we make our final vote? When you make your final vote, it does not need to be zero, but anything that is in the red would contemplate a, a withdrawal from fund balance. Thank you. Mr. Roosevelt. At the committee, at the end of the committee meeting, um, I, I've, I indicated, and I believe there's others that have support, that we're looking for this to be below 2.4. I think I looked at a max, or I indicated a max of 2.2 tax increase, as opposed to a 2.4, or the result, which is 2.4 of negative 1%. So I'm encouraged by this, this number because you're, you're getting there. You're really close. So I'm excited that we can, we can get down closer to two, but 2.2, 2, uh, that area. I just want, I understand tonight is ceremonial and, uh, and I appreciate the work that you've done at getting closer to that. Thank you. Absolutely. And just for the board's edification, for every 0.1% of an act one, 
Uh, so if you went from 2.4 to a 2.0, you would have to add approximately $600,000 to that deficit. So we're in the $650,000 range for the deficit, which is a huge improvement over the four or $5 million we were a couple of weeks ago. And if the state comes back with more money, uh, this is kind of a home run. Giving the board everything it's asked for, um, supporting the, the every every initiative that has been brought to bear, um, and then ha has, has some room with the $1.2 million uh, budgetary reserve. Questions? Thank you, Mr. Hidalgo. Um, I just wanted to uh, um, thank you for the presentation, Mr. Harris. Um, and I wanted to, to just share the sentiment of, of Mr. Roosevelt that I, you know, I appreciate all the work. I think we still have some work to do and I look forward to the next finance committee meeting. Um, and, I, and I appreciate the chart you showed us showing kind of how much increases are for a typical household. Um, but I also want to just, you know, kind of remind people that not everyone has the same amount of, you know, discretion. You know, they have they don't have as much discretion as terms of what they're spending money on their own fixed incomes. Um, and even though we are very lucky to be in an area that maybe doesn't have as much of that, um, I just want to make sure people think about. You know, we have inflation, we have gas prices um, that are high, we have food prices that are higher. Um, our community might see higher utility bills this summer, right, as we are voting on this. And so I just want to make sure we, we really think about the majority of our community that it does not have students in the community, or I'm sorry, in the district sending their students here. Um, and we really just sharpen our pencils as much as we can. I really, really appreciate all the sharpening. And I think we still have some pencil there that can be sharpened. Um, but I just want to thank you for taking the time to really work with us. And I, too, would like to see that number go down. I'd like to see us have less fund balance that we're dipping into. Um, but I really look forward to the upcoming couple weeks. So thank you. Thank you. Mr. Turkey. Uh, yeah, uh, like you said, that number keeps going low and lower, which makes me happy because, as we've spoken before, um, I mean, I, I think I gave you a figure of two was my max as as a ceiling, not 2.4 or 2.2. And even two is based off of if the state comes in with higher revenue, I want to see that number go down towards one or below, whatever the case may be. Uh, I think you might have said this before, and I did want some clarification on it because you did say that you included the 7.8 full-time employees to the STEAM program. Was that figure that you calculated in at the higher rate or are you going in at the lower rate, which would bring that number down even lower? No, I, let me jump back to, to the slide. Oh, going the wrong way. The, the, the staffing at 7.8, that's about $59,000 per, assuming that, assuming that existing staff would would accrete into those positions. Thanks. Appreciate that. And uh, this is this is the, the the version. So we were able to load the 2223 budget into Synopsys. So if you look at the Delta 308807, uh, this is uh, projecting out the 2.4 percent tax increase at 23 and then a 2% tax increase going forward. Uh, so this is not IFO minus one anymore, this is at 2%. Uh, you see that there is a dip in fund balance in the 24 year, and that's because if you look at the 8,000s revenue from federal sources, you go from 2.4 million down to 1.4 million because the ESSER funds come off of, they, they come off the, of the payroll. And so we would either need to find ways to raise money to keep that, that, those staff that are on that program, to, just like we've done with the PCC, PCCD counselors, uh, or find other attritional savings. Mr. Dago, please. So that's good. I wish it just said 2% flat for the years two for four would be um, 
would be great. But I also see it looks like the local revenue sources, you project about a 2% growth also. Is that about? That's correct. Um, that's looking much better than, than what we've seen in the past. So to the board, we have a 2.4 proposed budget. I'd like to get to 2, 2.2. But the other end is, are we okay with dipping in the fund balance or we're looking not to? So it's gonna be one of those uh, you know, balancing acts between those two those items. You can have a 2% tax increase, but maybe we dip into the fund balance a little bit more. I'm more, this, this slide here is what intrigues me more about, can we get away with a 2% projection for the next four years and keep the balance above 28? Uh, million dollars in fund balance or around that. Uh, I'd like to clarify the 24, 25, 26, 27 do contemplate a 2% increase. Right. That's board. what I'm saying. I, I like that better than the Act 1 minus 1. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, I appreciate the work. You, I was going to say that, that there was no questions during your presentation. That means you're doing a really good job, you know, up to the end. So, we're going to go ahead, Mr. Tate. Yeah, I, I wanted to clarify we are planning to spend the fund balance uh, in this In the 22 budget. year? Yeah. I, uh, I'm not a prognosticator, but I just saw the EITs coming in, and they are really strong this year. So we may, we may eclipse that, because we have not spent all of our budgetary reserve. Yeah, actually, I was referring to 23. Oh, forgive me, yes. If the board enacted a 2.4, there would be a spend of in fund balance of three hundred eight thousand dollars. No, sixty thousand, fifty-nine thousand. Exactly. You're correct. Yeah, You're correct. I, 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 I'm not. No, no. But let's be, you know, yes, real with everybody. Yeah. So. Yes. And so a two, per, Mr. Tate, on 2024, two percent tax increase, we'd be dipping two million into it with the projections as we are now. Uh, we still have, but I, yeah, at the end here, I'm going to ask us to go through the what do we get and make sure that he has the good feedback. I want to make sure you have a clear, open discussion, try to land somewhere, because we have the 12th of May, then we have a board meeting, and then in June, and then we'll be the 16th, and I think we'll, we'll be able to get there. I'm, I'm confident. Yep. Mrs. Powell, you have a question? So by dipping into our fund balance, um, it's going to affect our borrowing cost, right? And I know we plan to renovate our schools. And my concern is um, by not increasing to by whatever to 2.4 and go down to 2 or 2.2, we are affecting, maybe it's going to cost us more because we're going to have to pay more to borrow money to make the renovations and whatever else is needed. And also, um, I was looking at the uh, slide that you showed earlier. So the 2.4% increase, you said it's an extra $123 for the average like um, the average property system. owner. Yeah. So I'm not sure if this is, I mean, th that to me looks reasonable given, you know, um, that we can balance our budget and we're not dipping into the, into the fund balance. And, um, the people who um, don't have children in the school district, and I spoke with a lot of them not too long ago, they want a very strong district. They want the best education because that's how it's pride for them, but also that's what keeps their property values high. So it's not that they pay the extra money without any benefit. Of course, if you have children in the district, we get the highest benefit, and we all want that. And you know, Nobody wants to pay taxes, including me, but I don't think it's a huge amount to pay the $123 on the average per year in order to benefit for ba like a balanced budget and not getting into the fund balance and affecting the borrowing costs. I mean, I don't know, do you agree? Do you want to elaborate on that? Well, so it, the the borrowing, uh, the, the credit rating of the district is strong. It's a double A. It's it's probably the best uh, in in the region. Uh, there is a triple A credit rating, and you would have to perhaps double or triple your fund balance to have that kind of a, of a credit rating. So uh, a three hundred thousand dollar hit in my mind. I'm not 
I'm not standard and poor. I, 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 I'm not a credit rater, but I would, I would imagine that that that's, that rather insignificant amount compared to the gestalt of the, of the budget would not be a factor. You're saying, but by, by using the fund balance, because it's not gonna stay as it is, right? Plus next year or the, the year after that, do you think with the inflation being so high, we we'll only have a 2% increase? Well, I mean, is it economically sound to believe that? Well, ma'am, I, 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 I'm, I'm tasked by the board to get a budget across the table that can be acted upon by June 30th. And my, if, if I had my druthers, I'd be asking you to go 3.4% simply because I don't know the, the scenarios of cost. And, but, I, but I know that this board is given strict direction that we need to be south of 2.4. So uh, I, I work for the board and I wanna make sure I support this community, but it, it, it's incumbent upon me to tell you that the, the questions you're asking are thoughtful and they're, they're helping to guide the conversation. Um, but the, the reality of the other revenues that are increasing uh, does alleviate the district's need to be forced into, like other communities, forced into a max tax increase every year. So that's, that's one of the beauties of the, of, of the developments that are coming. And if I could just give a plug for next week's meeting, uh, there, there are going to be some really interesting developments considering the, the average assessed value and, uh, and, and an update on the state gaming money, which would further lower the impact on the average homeowner who is eligible for a homestead rebate. So uh, I, I can't go into much of that today because I don't have the slides prepared, uh, but you'll have them in your inbox uh, tomorrow afternoon uh, for discussion and review on Thursday. Does that answer your question? Just for some additional clarification, Mr. Harris, um, last year, the 2021 budget, there was a projected uh, fund balance starting this year of 20 million, correct? Correct. But we ended up with 30 million. Correct. And our AA credit rating was assigned to us at that point at a 20 million, correct? It was, yes, we did maintain the AA credit rating. So a three hundred and eight thousand dollar or a two fifty, whatever um, number, while significant, with respect to a ten ten million dollar, is uh, is probably ad adjustable or accommodating by the AA credit rating to maintain that. I, I would be highly surprised if our credit rating went down because of a dip into fund balance for three hundred thousand dollars. And and similarly, while we're projecting um, a fund balance right now that slightly goes down, the same thing could happen this year, perhaps not to such a large extent, and that's why we benefit from a conservative analysis on this. That's true. Thank you. Point of point of order, real quick. I think that thirty-two million also has borrowed money in it. Um, of borrowed money that we're using for Soulfine Stone and Hillcrest. No, sir. No, sir. That's you're, you're you're saying our fund balance went up ten million dollars. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, just just so the board's aware, the, the, there there are segregated funds, separate accounts. Uh, the, there's the general obligation bond. Name the year. Funds are deposited in the construction fund, and then there are, are bank accounts called Council Rock School District General Fund. Those are completely separate separate accountings. Mr. Hickey. Just one question, I guess. I mean, maybe an opinion, and like I said, once again, for the public's edification, is we talk about fund balance a lot. We just throw these numbers around. Is there a number or a percentage where I don't want to say is optimal. I mean, for example, we have a $30 million fund balance, which means we're north of 10% of our budget. Like, at what point does it start to affect our rating? Like, I don't want to ha see a $22 million fund balance, but, you know, I'm not, I don't, I'm not adverse to borrowing some of that fund balance, as Mr. Roosevelt said, to, to pay down this. And uh, so, like I said, at what number does it start getting a little hairy, like, oh, we're gonna run the risk of losing our good credit rating. And, you know, cause I don't wanna see that fund balance go up to 40 million. And in the meantime, you know, it's easy for others to say, oh, it's only a couple dollars here and there. But like I said, you know, you have people living on fixed incomes 
that are paying this 8% across the board and $123 a year is, for them, it's a lot of money. Understood. So if I can encapsulate your question, if the fund balance goes down, how much would, how much is required for fund balance? We have a board policy of 5% of our general fund budget. Okay. And if the, the credit rating would be impacted, and again, I'm not an expert on this, but if the board were to experience significant fund balance fluctuations, really, really high, really, really low, and then stay low and then go really, really high. That's a function of the, the budgeting process. So what, what my attempt to, to figure out what had been done in the past and how budgets had been created, uh, I, I shared with the board earlier today the per pupil allocations and how, how that came to be. That, that's an arbitrary number based on a, a current spend. I, I want to make sure that the board has, has a clear understanding that we, we, are, we have to have enough we have, enough, have to have enough fat in the budget to take care of the what-ifs, but we don't want to be so, so generous in, that, in raising that fund, those funds that we continue to have surplus budgets. We're, we're by law, we're required to pass a zero budget, and whether that is you know, having, if, if, if there is surplus based on a 2.4% in tax increase, then we're going to lower it to zero. So every dollar that we get in in revenue would then then lower the, the tax levy or the, the the consideration of a tax levy. But for for your purpose, my you want to have fund balance as high as possible for the credit rating, and not only for that, but for the for the what ifs. But as 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 this board is has spoken, there there are things that you cannot forecast for, and a ten million dollar variation to the good was nothing that anyone ever forecasted. It's a good place to be. Mr. Adaga. Um, so, yeah, 5% was the board mandated uh, level. You couldn't go below. I'd never want to go there. My comfortable spot and the bottom would be probably about 10% of the budget. Just I feel comfortable when we go to 10 or below, I start to get uh, worried from my own personal standpoint. And that's growing every year, you know. So this year it's 25% million, you know, 10%, then it's 26, 27, and then 28 in 2027. So that would be a 10% projected budget uh, uh, fund balance. Uh, from what I understand, and I'm just, you know, it's, it's all hearsay, but I think you'd have to get around 50, $50 million fund balance for that part portion to help increase your credit rating. If you look at the other ones who are AAA compared to their budget, um, 50 might get you there. So seeing $30 million come in, uh, or to see it bump when we were seeing, we're supposed to see it drop, was a nice uh, surprise. But I'm all about rainy days. And, you know, I'm, I'm not sure, again, that we should, uh, uh, we should, you know, take this for granted what's going on right now. Uh, so from that standpoint, I'd like to keep the fund balance where it's at. We have to reasonably raise the taxes to keep up with inflation. But uh, we can also look at what we're doing, you know, from a spend standpoint. And I think that's part of the discussion tonight, maybe. Thanks. Mrs. Morso. I just have a quick clarifying question. Um, so in terms of seeing the kind of projected years that we're looking at right here, um, you're saying that you're, are you modeling a 2.4 every year? I'm modeling a 2. A 2. So cumulatively, how much would that be? Uh, if I don't have the um, slide there, but everything increases, it's, it's $4 million a year, and then builds exponentially on top of that. So percentage-wise? It's, well, it's an average of 2%. So cumulatively? Cumulative. Well, two plus two plus so, two. Like I'm so trying to get I, at. I there's be like a to the board that you're not raising taxes eight, eight, ten percent across the years. Like adding adding two plus two plus two plus two does not give you the mathematically accurate percentage, right? It's it has to be averaged. Okay. So we're looking at maybe an average of two point oh five percent over the five years. So could we have a slide on that? In, sure. Okay. Thank you. Are you, I'm, I'm sorry, that would otherwise be known as a growth rate. That's so. 
I just think it would be helpful for the community to understand that. So thank you very much. Mr. Harris, are you, are you done, sir? Uh, I have two more slides. Uh, keynotes, uh, we've, we've talked about all these. Uh, the one, one piece of information that will come from facilities, there are security upgrades that we're looking to purchase uh, in the near future. They will, we will look to purchase them from Capital Reserve. The projections do include the ESSER revenue su sunset. The questions, and I, I think the board has spoken loud and clear, the board is not okay with 2.4 real estate tax increase, and we'll look to get that as close to two or under as possible. Uh, will Governor Wolf's budget be enacted before June 16th? Who knows? Uh, what impact will the uh, June 1st enrollment deadline have on our elementary section need? And how many students could return to Council Rock from charter schools? Those are some, some burning questions uh, to be continued. Uh, next steps in finishing the process. These are the pieces that we talked about. The locus of control, the legislature controls two. The assessed values come from the Board of Assessments. Parents decide where the kids go to school and the board dis controls the staffing adjustments. Next steps in the timeline, May 5th, we are here. I was gonna cross that out ceremonially, but I, I didn't know if I would live to see another day. So here we are at May 5th, I'll cross that out for next time. May 12th, June 2, and June 16th, we have uh, three more cracks at the apple to get to a final budget. Any questions? Anybody else have any comments or questions? So I'll just make a, could a quick, um, I realize this is ceremonious tonight. Um, I also realize that we have a lot of work to do. So I'm going to be a no on tonight's budget proposal. Um, I believe that we have a lot of work to do. I believe June 1st is going to change the trajectory of this budget when we look at enrollment numbers. And, and, and there's been conversation this week about our special ed numbers. Uh, I have not had an update about how many charter school kids have come back that we're aware of. I'm concerned because that number is large right now. What is that going to do for enrollment and our building capacities of which we have two schools that are uh, having any enrollment issues as we speak. So I, I think there's enough support to move this forward, but I will be a no tonight. Anybody else? Yeah. I would like to uh, uh, solicit any more information, any more details from the board, any wants. What are they looking for? Because this is coming down to the wire for for the edification or for the sake of, of Mr. Harris, who's grinding away at this very diligently. If you have any feedback. You're bouncing that back to me, Joe. I'd like to talk. Not you. Okay. I'm I'll, giving this to I'll the take whole it. board. Go I, ahead. I'd like to discuss the sub rates that the board said that they would rediscuss. Uh, I'm not so sure we need to leave it at that number. Uh, the board was also presented with a, an additional option of 4.8, 4.6. FTEs for STEAM, that's not been presented. What would that do to the budget? What's the difference? Um, so there's some things out there. I think this board's looking at probably the best worst case scenario. So I think there's other options uh, that we have been presented, but it's not on these slides. So that's why I, uh, I'm gonna be a no tonight. Um, I, 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 I struggle with saying the numbers wrong but I, I'm, I'm struggling with how we got to a $32 million fund balance. So I'm gonna ask, I mean, if, if it has to be with me, that's fine, where that came from. I, I, I'm wrestling with it. I, I, I just, it's inconceivable to me that it went up that much. Um, so that's one question. And I recognize this is a formality too. Um, I've heard lots of numbers for two. I always in these budget exercise strive for zero. And that forces rankings and priorities, and then you can move off of it. Um, I won't land on zero, can't, we can't do it. But, uh, you know, so um, this may be a formality, but it's, it sets a tone and I'm, I'm a, a little concerned. Um, but right now, uh, and, and it, it could be just me, but that, that number is enormous. So I, 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 I'm struggling with it, so. Um, and I'll look myself too. I'll start taking this apart. But there, there, you know that that one I, I, I wrestle with. So in, in in light of what Mr. Salomon said, he took my other points. So anybody else? May I respond to Dr. Thor's question? Please, sure. So you have a an audited financial statement that that had a standing fund balance of about twenty two million dollars, and then you had a, a positive variance uh, revenue to spend. In, in the in the 21 or the 2021 audit 
that positive, it was about $9.9 .9 million. That's lived on slides that have been presented to the board. That's how you got there. So the, the $10 million variance was the board collected more than was planned and spent less than was planned. So, I mean, and that's really the anomaly of the COVID year. Uh, I, I, I wish I could bring that to you every year and you'd never have to raise taxes. Uh, however, my, my concerns are, you know, that we, not, no repeat performances. I want to be wrong. Don't, please, please don't, you know, but sure. it's. Well, wouldn't it, have, wouldn't it, excuse me, wouldn't it have been like the final budget that came in after the fiscal year last year showed where the money came from? Absolutely. A lot of it was transportation. Something was a, an accounting error of about one or two million dollars, if I remember correctly. And then, but it was it was discussed in public. But uh, so, but I'm happy to review it too because you know what we got so much information data overload. I like to go over things more than once because you tend to forget things. Uh, and again, I'm looking, so I see something. I would like to know the numbers on the charter schools and if we can get those uh, numbers down, because I think that was over a million dollars, getting close to two. If we can get those students. I believe it's 2.7. in the So we can, if we can get those students back, that's going to be a big, I'm all looking about being uh, really nice here. So, but that won't come again until we know June. Yeah, and it's, it's June 1st due enrollment, so we have two meetings after that. And we're still reaching out. It's in the ballpark. It's just and, not there tonight. Right. And so we're reaching out to those families. Is there a program that the administration is doing at all to reach out to those uh, students? I know there was, but just. So, <clears throat> excuse me, we are reaching out to, <laughs> I'm sorry, reaching out to the families. Um, we're actually going to be sending a personal letter to each of our families that have withdrawn for a charter school, and also including with that will be uh, a really short survey to ask them, why did you leave? And if you're saying you're not gonna come back, why? And tell us and, and then you know help us to improve uh, so we can hopefully get more of those families back. That's a great idea. And that number jumped a bunch. Absolutely. It's, it's, it jumps off the page at you. Yep. Yep, that's, to me, that's, type of low-level fruit that we could try to get back. And it changes the trajectory of our, it's, it, it's, it's a big deal. I think they wanted a virtual program. Well, I wish them well. Anybody else? Mrs. Marceau. Um, I just wanted to add that uh, because this is a proposed budget, I will be voting yes on it. I do not want a 2.4 and I don't want to use fund balance, but I also appreciate the work that Mr. Harris is doing in the team. And if we have to meet every week, I'm committed to it. We're going to get this budget done, and um, hopefully we aren't. But I just wanted to just thank everyone and say that I will be voting yes uh, tonight. Thank you. I'm going to do a roll call. So if anybody else's comments, please jump in there. First, Mrs. Pally. So I know there's no way we're going to approve this tonight. I thought it was more of an exercise to see where we stand and understand um, where um, the winds blow and what are there things we want to look into it. So, and we have finance committee meetings or we can do extra meetings because I think we, we all have to understand better. So not approving it tonight, it's not, it's actually, it, for me it's expected. So it's just the opportunity to dig into deeper so we're all comfortable with where we are. So I, I'd like to clarify that yeah. this was an advertised meeting for, for the purpose of approving the proposed final budget, which is a statutory requirement. So I, I'm asking uh, politely that if we can get an affirmative vote, we can keep the ship moving uh, toward finance and then toward the June 16th uh, deadline uh, that the board has set for itself. So um, I, I, I want to be clear on that, that the board needs to take action tonight, and if the board takes action in, in, in dissent, then it upsets the timelines uh, that, we've, that the board has already set. The board has to publicly approve, with at least five votes, a proposed budget before 30 days in advance of voting on and approving its final budget. So uh, folks have described this as ceremonial. It, it is to a certain extent in the sense that it's not binding on the board and does not become the actual 22-23 budget. 
but you can't get to the final budget, which you do have to approve on or before June 30th, until you've approved this um, proposed budget at least 30 days in advance of that. So just to be clear. And I shouldn't say it has to be this one, but if this is not the one that's approved, then you have to go back to the drawing board and you have to approve some proposed budget at least 30 days in advance of when you vote on the final. So just to clarify, that would be June 6th is the earliest, or what, what's today? I'm sorry, sorry, it's the 5th, right? Cinco de Mayo. So June 5th would be the early, 5th or 6th would be the earliest we could vote statutory. So if we vote no tonight, all it does is we, we literally could uh, push it out for another three or four, uh, another two weeks and still get it before June 30th. Not that we're going, I'm just doing the exercise in my mind if there's five dissent votes. We would have to scramble. No, well, well that's what I said. So I would just comment on me personally that uh, when we went into last fall uh, and we were doing some negotiations, I was looking at 1.8. Uh, that was where I was looking landing and we're at 2.4. It's not where I want to be, but inflation has shown its ugly head like I've not seen in my uh, young lifetime. But um, the statute literally reads something to the effect of, you know, the board shall pass a proposed budget, which it shall then review and revise as it determines appropriate. You know, so the, the whole the, the whole point of a proposed budget is to is to make that 30 day window and then within that 30 day window or longer if you have time revise and adjust uh, the budget as, as, you, as, you, as you can within your discretion. Okay, and that allows the comment of the public to and constituents to stakeholders to give feedback. So just to finish, um, you know, I'll vote yes today, but uh, as a formality, but you know, uh, this wasn't where I wanted to be six months ago. And I'd like to have seen everything happening at once as crazy as that would have been. You know, big budget items are already on ink Okay, thanks. Ms. Pelley. So uh, based on the new information, I think it makes sense to approve it as a preliminary budget so we can move forward. And then with the understanding that we're definitely gonna revise it. Yes, ma'am. So we make sure that we were not behind the deadline for the final approval on June 3rd. To approve maybe. the ceremonial purchase order for a new pencil sharpener. Anybody else? I was just going to suggest if questions have been answered that we call the question. It's been moved and seconded. Ask for a vote. I was trying to get there. Can I have a roll call, Madam Secretary? Ed Solomon? No. Mike Roosevelt? Yes. Bob Hickey? Yes. Yoda Pally? Yes. Kristen Marcel? Yes. <clears throat> Excuse me. Edward Tate? Yes. Michael Thorward? No. Miriam McKee? Yes. And Joseph Hidalgo? Yes. So that's two. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Harris. From there, we're going to go to L&M. Uh, Mr. Tate, would you like to take them? Thank you. Yeah, uh, together. Um, L&M. The Human Resources Department requests that the attached personnel actions are approved as presented. All candidates are, in the judgment of the administration, qualified for the position for which they are being recommended. That is L. Can you, can you, read, the, can you read the action? Yeah, but you, but you read the comments. Read the recommended action. I move to approve. Okay, thank you. I move to approve the personal action that is contained in the attachment to this agenda. M, I move to approve the personal actions addendum as contained in the attachment to this agenda. Second. Second, Mrs. Marcel. Thank you, Mr. Tate, for doing that. Any comments from the board, Mr. Tate? Dr. Ali can go first. I'd Certainly, thank you, Mr. Tate. So in our personnel actions tonight, um, Mr. Doug Taylor has announced his intent to retire from public education. 
Doug has developed and managed the district's capital plan, which is often referred to as Doug's book, and with a focus on safety and green technology, earning LEED Gold certifications. Mr. Taylor is responsible for over 100 summer capital improvement projects with a focus on preventative maintenance, safety, and functionality. He has renovated and expanded seven of the 10 elementary schools and both middle schools. With a focus on safety and security, Doug has supported the implementation of the ALICE training and improved school security through construction and improvement projects. During his tenure at Council Rock, Doug has touched over 1.1 million square feet of Council Rock facilities, completing all projects on time and under budget. But what is most important to know about Doug is that he always puts students' safety and learning first in every project. He has been dedicated to creating safe and welcoming instructional spaces for our students and staff. So thank you, Doug, and I wish you the best as you begin this next chapter in your life. Uh, Mr. Tate. Yeah, I, 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 it's hard to follow um, Dr. Elliott's comments, but I just wanted to say that um, <clears throat> in addition to all that, Doug is a gentleman and a real professional, and um, I certainly hope that we get to work continuously with um, Mr. Taylor in his new role in the years ahead. And uh, I, I fouled up here because Dr. Elliott said that um, Doug renovated seven elementary schools. I got five on here. So I got to figure out what the other two that are missing and get my label maker out and add the other two. But, but, uh, but this is a standard issue, Council Rock hard hat, and we got you know um, those elementary school projects and the Star Center. I mean, what a great, I'm, I'm exceedingly proud of that facility. We, you know, as a district, uh, to create a brand new facility for special education is pretty amazing. And the South Turf, I mean, we didn't talk about that very much, but. You know, that was a big project. Um, so I'll walk over and give this to you later, Doug, but thank you. It's a pleasure working with you. Doug, my compliments to you. My first year on the board, I had the pleasure of serving with you as the facilities chair, and our conversations often dove into softball and came back to the buildings and back to softball, and uh, it was always a learning experience. And the thing that I, I found always you know, a, a breath of fresh air is that you spoke to me. Obviously, we're you know we we get along and, and we have our conversations, but you taught me along the way. And as a new board member, you know, there's that learning curve. Um, in today's world, it's a long time. Um, but that first year, you know, opened my eyes to the crazy amount of money the Council Rock puts into their buildings to make them safe, secure, and and a learning environment for our children. And you should be proud every time you drive by the buildings. Uh, because you know you're the reason they happened. You're the reason they came to delivery when they were supposed to, and they came in and under budget. So, my hats off to you. Welcome to your new career. Don't forget us. We hope to see you soon, and uh, best wishes to you and the family. Mr. Roosevelt, thank you, Doug. Thank you very much. Um, in my brief few months of being part of this board, I reflect back upon our onboarding session, which. We've done a lot between then and now. Um, I did notice that you had a collection of hard hats in your office, so this is another one to add to it. I've appreciated our brief time working together. I especially appreciate the book that you unloaded that I request for, and when you gained it, gave it to me, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, this might be a little bit more. <laughs> but I, I do like information, I like data, so it's great. Uh, I wish we had more opportunity or an opportunity to work longer together, but I respect your decision. So um, thank you very much. Anybody else? Mr. Aldago, please. Yeah, thank you, Doug. Um, I just have to say you are one of the most talented people I've ever met in my life. I mean that. Um, I know a lot of engineers, and uh, you know, as you said, everybody talked. I can't say much better than what Sue did, but um, when I came on board and what I've learned for you, you're always accessible, you're, you're straight to the point articulate, and um, I learned a lot about this um, job through you. 
So I just, I'm, I was really surprised to hear you uh, we're, we're moving on, but I do appreciate uh, uh, everything you've left. You're leaving a legacy on, in the school district for sure. So I appreciate that. I just wanted to say that publicly. Thank you, Mr. Doug. Anybody else? Okay. You good, Doug? You got a, you got a prepared speech? No, look at him. He's turning red. <laughs> yeah, thanks again, Doug. Uh, we'll, I'm trying to get you out of here, but we got to stop talking. Uh, facilities Committee, uh, Mr. Tate. Oh, Mr. Roosevelt. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, Doug leaving? No, we can just skip. We can skip over it. <laughs> okay. Is there any further conversation from the board? I try to keep you, Doug. Any objections? Hearing none, I'm going to ask you to mark them unanimous. Thank you for staring me back there. Mr. Roosevelt, please, facilities. Yes, thank you. Um, the, uh, the, the facilities committee meeting was held on Wednesday, April 27th. I chaired that meeting as co-chair with my other co-chair, Mr. Tate. So during that meeting, we, rec we reviewed security updates, emergency management updates. We reviewed facility improvement projects, uh, Hillcrest, Soul Finestone, and as well as the, we discussed Richboro Elementary as a, as a project that is on the agenda. Capital improvement projects were also discussed um, and included in that, I think it's worth noting that uh, we've, we're looking at a playground study, which has been approved, to go around and look at all of the different schools and ensure that they are safe and see what improvements could be done. Uh, so that was the facility committee meeting. With that, I move to approve consent agenda items B through D as contained in the attachments to this agenda. Second, Dr. Thorbert. Any board comment? Any objection? Hearing none, I'm going to ask the secretary to mark that unanimous. Mr. Roosevelt, continue on, sir. Agenda item E. I move to award the amendments to the, Sh the Schrader Group Architects and Dehui Engineers Incorporated proposals for Richboro Elementary School additions and renovation projects designed in bid phase as attached to this agenda subject to audit and solicitor's review. Second. Second. Second, I heard Mr. Hickey, I'm sorry. Doug, any comments on this? Last shot. Well, um, so we, we had the discussions at the facilities committee meeting uh, relative to uh, Richboro Elementary School, and if we'd put it out to bid as it's currently designed, which is the same or similar design as Hillcrest, and there was discussion about um, including an alternate for five classrooms and an alternate for 10 classrooms. So went back to the design team. We um, requested the additional fees for the design phase and for the construction phase. This is for the design and bidding phase only. The second approval would come after the bids are reviewed with the district. And then at that time, you'd move to the, the, the second phase of these fees. So um, they both, uh, both firms did provide a fee uh, to document the project with alternates um, including base bid, base bid plus five, and base bid plus 10. And all of the work that goes into revisiting the land development process and the costs associated with revisiting the lead process, which is also um, a, a process that has to be revisited. So um, hopefully this satisfies your, your request. Thank you, sir. I think it does. Any other board comment on this? All right, I'm going to ask for a roll call, Madam Secretary. Mike Roosevelt? Yes. Bob Hickey? Yes. Yoda Pally? Yes. Kristen Marcel? Yes. Ed Tate? Yes. Michael Thorward? Yes. Marion McKee? Yes. Joseph Haldago? Yes. And Ed Solomon? Yes. Passes 9-0. Thanks again, Doug. From there, we move to the second set of public comment. I have no other one signed up. Anybody in the audience wish to make a comment? Going once, going twice. All right, hearing none, we're going to continue down the agenda. Board comment, any new business from the board? Mrs. Pally. I'm not sure if it's new or old business, but I just want to talk a little bit about the SEL. Uh, we know it was not on the agenda tonight because there were some... Um, 
discussion, I think, after the last committee meeting from different board members asking more questions. So uh, my understanding is that this is extremely important and we have to take care not only of the academics, but also the mental health and the support that our children. So again, my understanding is that uh, the board will come back with a different proposal on, for this program. So it's not, it's not dead, it's, it's gonna happen. And uh, I think it's one of these items that the new superintendent will have to bless. So um, I just wanna say that to our community because I don't want people to be disappointed that this is not gonna happen. Thank you, ma'am. Anybody else for new business? Any old business from the board? All right, hearing none, I'm adjourning the meeting.